Welcome to Fanfiction Audiobook. Pirate. Become a Pirate Starting from CPO. Chapter 1. Sea Circle Calendar 1510. Holy Land Mariajoy, World Government Office Building. Inside the spacious and bright office. A woman with blonde curly hair and a petite and graceful figure was casually flipping through a stack of documents on the table. This is the office of CP0, the intelligence agency under the world government. They are usually responsible for intelligence, assassinations, and security of important figures around the world. Wisps of early morning sunlight shine into the room through the window. The woman took a sip of tea gracefully, and after some rough selection, there were only two files left in front of her. Rob Lucci, male, zone ability user, 18 years old this year. He received training from a young age and joined CP9 at the age of 13. He has great strength and ruthless methods. He once killed 500 soldiers who were taken hostage by pirates. It is known as the most powerful killing weapon in CP9's history. After thinking silently for a while, she picked up another one. Carlos, male, zone ability user, 27 years old this year. I joined CP5 four years ago and have been performing undercover missions. I am thoughtful and good at disguise. I personally destroyed seven large pirate groups including the Bloody Hand Pirates, the Black Flag Pirates, etc. through division, provocation, and sneak attacks. It's really rare to grow from a rookie to an experienced and capable agent in just a few years. Stussy's eyes lit up and he continued to read. Huh. He was transferred to CP9 because he reported on his superior, Spandam. This guy seems to be born to be a young boy, which is kind of interesting. She seemed to have made up her mind and picked up the phone bug at hand. Ten minutes later. Boom, boom, boom. Outside the door, there was a brief and powerful knock on the door. Please come in. A man with short hair, wearing a black suit and a strong build pushed open the door. Carlos, right. I'm Stussy from CP0, specializing in intelligence work. The man nodded and sat on the sofa expressionlessly. The first impression of being calm and reliable made Stussy secretly nod. Looking at the taciturn person, Stussy smiled and said. As far as I know, your current situation is not very good. Although CP-5 officer Spandam made some mistakes, you caught him and got him into impel down. But after all, his father is still a high-ranking official in the world government. With his authority, it is extremely simple to get Spandam out. I'm curious, why are you willing to risk offending this big shot and do such a meaningless thing? Carlos shook his head slightly. Your Excellency specially called me here today. It shouldn't be for such boring things, right? Tell me, what's the mission? Stussy nodded, cast a satisfied look, and did not continue the previous topic. I won't hold back, I want you to join CP0. What about the conditions? It's really nice to talk to smart people. I need you to go to the New World and go undercover among the Beast's pirates to get information about the pirate Emperor Kaido. Looking at Carlos who frowned slightly, Stussy added. I guess you know something about it. Beasts pirates, as the name suggests, are mainly those with zone abilities. Among CP1 to CP9, only you and Rob Lucci meet the requirements. Although with the strength of the two of you, it is not difficult to become a cadre or something. But what undercover requires more is the ability to adapt. Compared to the one who is known as the most powerful and ruthless killing weapon in the history of CP9, you have richer undercover experience. You are the most suitable person for this task. If you refuse, I will feel very distressed. Quote. Stussy winked playfully. Carlos frowned slightly. He can indeed turn into an eagle, but he is not the zone demon fruit power that others think. It's just a hero skill from a previous MOBA competitive game. In fact, he is a time traveler. I accidentally came to this world of pirates a few years ago and was lucky enough to awaken the Arwuzai system. In the past few years, he has been hanging around in the first half of the Grand Line, working undercover as a second in command in various pirate groups. Undercover work sounds easy, but only you know the difficulty best. Thinking of his first undercover experience, Carlos still has fresh memories. For him, who was just an ordinary person at that time, it was like dancing on the edge of a knife. An unintentional word or even a look may expose one's identity and lead to a situation of no return. Although dangerous, the benefits are unimaginable. Whenever he successfully completes A, B, 
Betrayal, he can draw a random prize from the system. Rewards include things from the pirate world, such as weapon colors, observation hockey, marine six styles, etc. There are also things that are not from the pirate world, such as going behind enemy lines, shark bullet technique. This is also an important reason why he has been able to reach the level of the elite vice admiral in this department in just a few years. If this kind of rocket-like speed of becoming stronger were applied to others, it would be unthinkable. The more powerful the undercover agent is and the more successful the undercover agent is, the better the rewards will be. However, beasts pirates. As a time traveler, Carlos knows how difficult this mission is. Since the overlord of the Sea Rocks pirate fell apart, Kaido, Charlotte Linlin, and Whitebeard established themselves in the New World. They are now the three most powerful pirate groups in the world. It is not so much a pirate group as it is a self-contained organization as large as a country. They occupy a vast territory, have countless vassal pirate groups, and have a terrifying force of nearly 100,000. The bounties offered by the cadres under his command are all measured in hundreds of millions. Not to mention that Kaido himself is a top powerhouse standing at the top of the sea. Needless to say, the worst outcome would be to be beaten to death by Thunder 8 trigrams if his identity was exposed. Even if he is lucky enough to survive, he will inevitably be locked up in the Rabbit Bull Quarry and do hard labor day after day. If you want to get out of trouble, you may have to wait until Luffy, Luo and others go to Wanokuni to attack Kaido, and it is now Sea Circle Calendar 1510, and there is still a full 10 years before Luffy goes to sea. The task is tricky though but I rely on my acting skills developed over the past few years and my familiarity with the plot. As long as you're careful, there shouldn't be any problems. In the past few years, he has been working undercover for pirate groups with bounties exceeding 100 million. You can imagine how generous the rewards for backstabbing beasts pirates will be. Carlos fell into deep thought, repeatedly considering the pros and cons. For a moment, there was silence in the office. Stussy frowned. What? You don't want to. Becoming CP0, you no longer have to worry about what Spangdine can do to you. Carlos looked up and smiled. Spandine. I don't think this guy can compare to Beast's Pirates. When I was preparing to deal with his son, I was already prepared. If you threaten me with him, you can't say it's useless. I can only say it's useless at all. Stussy frowned and stared intently. After a while, he sighed slightly. Okay. Then let's go. Carlos opened his hands and leaned on the sofa. No, I mean, you have to pay more. Add money. Stussy's eyes widened slightly. That's right. Carlos spread his hands. You must know Beast's Pirates better than I do. You must give me some visible benefits when performing such a dangerous mission, right? Stussy nodded silently, thought for a moment and then said. Okay, I'll appoint you as the squad leader of CP0. Not only can you access information with confidentiality levels below S level, but you also have the right to recruit subordinates. If you like, I can send Rob Lucci to assist you in going to Wanokuni to carry out this mission. Sounds good, but the fewer people there are, the better. Carlos knows. In the future, Luki will disguise himself as a shipyard worker in the Water City, intending to obtain the Pluton design drawings from Bingshan. But judging from his years of undercover experience, there is only one review. It's so amateurish. Not to mention that for this mission, almost all members of CP9 were mobilized. They had been lurking for five years but still had not completed the mission. Besides, the shape of the scar on Lucci's back is exactly the same as the flag pattern representing world government. It was written all over my face that I was an undercover agent. For this kind of thing, the more people, the better. One more person is more dangerous. I act alone. Kaido's ambitions are not small. I heard that they have been recruiting troops and expanding their territory crazily during this period. I think they need a lot of manpower now. You just take advantage of this opportunity. Carlos shook his head and interrupted. You think too simply. The Beast's pirates are not an ordinary pirate group, and Kaido is not such a simple person either. Of course it's not okay for a nobody like me to rush to seek refuge. You mean. The first step is of course to become a pirate. At least appear on Marine's bounty list. As for the bounty, the higher the better. Stussy was stunned, and tapped her white fingers on the table. 
After thinking for a while, she nodded. It's a good idea, but I want to remind you that in order to prevent your identity from being exposed, the fewer people who know about it, the better. Your file will be classified as S-Class Secret. Apart from me, only the top commander of CP0 and the five elders can view it. Even Marshal Marine has no right to know. If you go too far and encounter Marine's siege, then I can only hope to see you in Impel Down. Carlos doesn't care. Since we are going to act, it is natural that it should be more realistic. It's better to be cornered. Wouldn't that be more convincing? Stussy cast an approving look. Did you get into the role so quickly? You are indeed a professional in this regard. It seems that I have chosen the right person. Carlos continued. Don't change the subject. To be honest, staying at CP9 is actually quite good. I wouldn't be willing to take on such a difficult task without enough benefits. This is a mission where you will die if you are not careful. Shouldn't you also express your feelings? Stussy covered her forehead, looking like she had a headache. Although she was helpless, she also understood that Carlos was the most suitable candidate. Okay, what do you want? Anything will do, like devil fruit, the ultimate sharp knife, etc. You should have it, right? Stussy couldn't help but roll her eyes. Don't even think about it. There are only 12 supreme swords in the world. Let's not talk about whether there are any. Even if there were, you wouldn't be able to defend a famous sword of this level. As for devil fruit, we still have a few paramesha in CP0, but you have already eaten them. Are you not afraid of death if you still eat them? Well, how about I give you an unused luxury manor on island number one of the Sabayati archipelago as a gift? I don't have a wife or children, and I'm out on missions all year round. I'm afraid I can only enjoy it after I retire. It's necessary to spend money when you go out. Let's be more practical. This manor plus 500 million belly. After some haggling, Carlos left the world government office building satisfied. Touching the property deed and the check for 500 million belly in his arms, he couldn't help but sigh. CP0 is really unimaginably rich. I don't know how many people's properties he has stolen. This mission is unlike any other. Although I have great confidence in my acting skills and psychological quality. But it never hurts to be extra prepared. System, open the panel. Carlos said something silently in his mind. A transparent properties panel suddenly appeared in front of me. Host, Carlos. Age, 27. Ability, armed color, excellent level, swordsmanship, grandmaster level, wisdom and knowledge, grandmaster level, marine six styles, control level, life return, proficient level. Skill, deep behind enemy lines, sharp bullet technique. Identity, world government, CP0. In the past few years, he has continued to receive rewards from the system through undercover work. Not only did he learn the Marine 6 styles and Iron Sword Master level swordsmanship, but he also learned the two-color hockey and upgraded the armament hockey from the entry level to proficiency, control, grandmaster, and reached excellence. According to Carlos' speculation, speaking of armament hockey alone, he should have reached the level of category. In addition, he also gained two very useful skills. One can summon a big eagle named Wa Luo, which can help him quickly enter the battlefield or escape. Another skill comes from the world of Hokage. By consuming your physical strength, you can instantly create shark-shaped water bombs to attack the enemy. The special thing is that it can absorb the energy of the opponent's attack, making it larger and more powerful. Thinking of this, Carlos opened the system backpack and checked the props inside. Sleep black tea, drink one cup and you will sleep for 10 hours. Veritaserum, used on a comatose target to make the target reveal all their secrets. Extremely realistic disguise mask, after use, the appearance, form, and voice change into the appearance of the target. Duration, 12 hours. Carlos thought for a moment and looked into the distance. Going to the auction next. Maybe you can get something good. Sabayati Archipelago is the only way to the new world. With many marines, pirates, merchants and bounty hunters gathered together, it can be called a mixed bag of lawless areas. Not only is it heavily guarded all year round, it is also very close to the marine headquarters, which can be reached in less than half a day's journey. Perhaps it was to serve the superior celestial dragons, or perhaps under the temptation of huge benefits. It is inevitable that a series of shameful activities such as smuggling, slave trade, and black market have sprung up here. 
In the auction house in Sabayati, as long as you have money, you can buy devil fruit and everything else. Thinking of this, Carlos had a smile on his face. It's time to make a scene. After leaving the Holy Land Mariajoy, Carlos came to Sabayati Archipelago by boat. First, he checked the gift Stussy gave him. This manor is located on the outskirts of island number one, far away from the bustling and noisy commercial center. Not only is the environment elegant, but the area is also quite large, covering an area of more than 200 acres. Carlos was naturally very satisfied. Then he came to the most famous underground auction on island number. 1. I randomly found a seat in the corner and sat down. The auction hasn't started yet, and people keep coming in in twos and threes. Maybe it's a professional habit, maybe it's just to kill boring time. Carlos looked around. There were a lot of people in the venue, about 50 or 60 people. Looking around, they were either the princes and nobles of the kingdom, or some pirates with bounties of over 100 million. We also spotted some familiar faces in the first few rows of seats. Carlos raised his eyebrows slightly. I didn't expect that even these guys would show up here. Maybe I've come to the right time this time. After a while, the crowd took their seats one after another. A rich middle-aged man appeared on the booth, shouting passionately. Hello all guests, I am Laboon Lotto, the host of today's auction. Without further ado, the auction has officially begun. Everyone, please take a look at this blood jade agate pendant from North Blue. The bottom auction price is 5 million belly. An ancient stone tablet with a history of more than 300 years was excavated from the territory of Alabasta and buried in the wind and sand. The lowest auction price is 8 million belly. A coral ring from the Fishmen Island, set with 10 sapphires, with a low auction price of 18 million belly. The host introduced the auction items passionately. However, these jewelry and antiques did not cause much response. Only a few wealthy people were slightly interested. Time passed by minute by minute. Just when Carlos was so bored that he almost fell asleep. Suddenly the host's sharp, high-pitched shouts came from the stage. Everyone, pay attention. What is going to be shown below is a really good thing. 21 skills of the sharp sword, hidden thunder. The famous knife that appeared on the booth immediately attracted everyone's attention. It is about 1.2 meters long. Under the light, the glass-like sword body shows a dreamy azure color. A lightning-like white line ran across the entire blade. The sharp blade reflected bursts of cold light, exuding bursts of murderous intent. Even though they were dozens of meters apart, they still felt an unspeakable palpitation. Everyone in the audience stared at this famous sword intently, and their breathing began to become rapid. Even a fool can understand that this is a good thing. After a brief silence, everyone raised the signs in their hands like a landslide and a tsunami. Guest number 21 bids 30 million belly. Guest number 17 is 40 million belly. Number 56, 50 million baileys. Number 87, 100 million baileys. There are even treasures of this level. Carlos looked at the booth with some surprise. The Great Kuei Dao is a famous sword second only to the 12 skills of the Supreme Kuei Dao. As far as he knows, the great swords include, Wado Aikimanji, Second Generation Kidetsu, Shu Shui, Tianyu Yuzan, Enma. Thanks to system rewards. Before he knew it, Carlos had become a powerful swordsman. A famous sword of this level suddenly appeared in front of him, and the desire buried deep in his bones suddenly burst out. There was a strong urge to get it in my heart. Now that you've met it, you can't miss it. Without any hesitation, Carlos raised the sign in his hand. The host's eyes lit up. Guest number 28, bid 200 million belly. Is there anyone else offering a higher price? Anyone else? After asking several times in a row, everyone in the audience fell silent and looked at him in surprise. 3. 2. The host smiled broadly and was about to announce the final result while holding up a hammer. 300 million baileys. A man suddenly stood up on the seat in the first row. He was wearing a black bowler hat and a mustache. Tufts of chest hair were exposed under a dark blue slit shirt. He had two long knives on his waist. Hiss. This guy. It's the captain of the 5th Division of the Whitebeard Pirates, Foil Bista. I didn't expect that he would actually appear here. Did he come specifically for this famous sword? Didn't he already have two famous swords? Why would he still bid? 
Bista glanced at the entire audience, smiled slightly and said. I'm sorry everyone, although this hidden mine is just a 21-piece sharp knife, it has considerable collection value. Please give it a try. Everyone in the audience sighed slightly. Foil, Bista. They are familiar. Let's not talk about this guy's identity as the captain of the 5th Division of the Whitebeard Pirates. He himself is a famous swordsman in New World for a long time. Regardless of financial resources or strength, they are things that cannot be underestimated. Now that something has caught his eye, it's basically out of the question. Wait a minute. 400 million belly. At this moment, an unhurried voice came from beside Bista. I saw a tall and strong man with short yellow hair slowly standing up. He was wearing a blue cotton padded jacket, with shoulders that resembled two giant dumplings, and a belt with a gin pattern around his waist. He said an exaggerated number that everyone present could not believe. After seeing each other's appearance clearly, everyone swallowed hard and looked solemn. If I'm not mistaken, this man, the leader of the BIGMOM pirates and the third son of the pirate emperor Charlotte Linlin. Charlotte Daifuku. I didn't expect that he would also come here. Are these two people here just for this famous sword? There was a slight commotion in the auction venue. Some people preparing to bid also became hesitant. Let's not talk about whether he has so much money. Even if he has money, he still has to consider the consequences of offending the two of them. The Whitebeard Pirates and the BIGMOM Pirates are not entities that they can mess with at will. 400 million Baileys. What a pity. Bista shrugged and sat back in his seat. He already has two famous swords that are as good as the hidden thunder on the stage. If it is just for collection, there is no need to spend such a high price. Just when I was about to make the final decision. Carlos's voice suddenly came from the corner of the auction. 450 million. Everyone in the audience looked sideways. What? Guest number 18 offered 450 million belly. Is there any higher one? Is there any higher one? A high-pitched voice broke through the roof. The auction host's face turned red and he roared hysterically. Dafu frowned slightly and turned around to look. I have my eye on this famous sword. 500 million belly. This is my bottom line. Carlos seemed not to hear, and said to himself. You offer 500 million. Sorry, I'll pay you a billion. Sorry, I'll pay you one billion. As soon as these words were spoken, everyone present could not help but widen their eyes. Looking blankly at Carlos in the corner. At this moment, their brains seemed to have shut down, and they all opened their mouths wide, not knowing what to say. The whole place fell into a dead silence, and you could hear a pin drop. An adult male giant slave only costs 50 million belly. Even if it is a rare devil fruit, you can usually win it for about 200 to 300 million belly. Gradually, the crowd seemed to come to their senses and began to whisper among themselves. Who is this guy? What a crazy person. He actually offered 1 billion belly for a famous sword. Even the legendary celestial dragons are nothing more than that, right? Looking at the way he is dressed, he doesn't look like a prince or nobleman. With so much money, is this guy a pirate? But I haven't seen any wanted posters for him. Bista frowned. His eyes were fixed on Carlos. With such financial resources, this guy shouldn't be a nobody. But he has been around the new world for so long, but he doesn't have the slightest impression of this person. Deal. Deal. As if afraid that the other party would regret it, the auction host panted heavily and knocked down the small hammer in his hand. Carlos stood up and left his seat, striding onto the booth. I took out this, hidden thunder, from the glass cabinet and observed it carefully. On the side, the host nodded and bowed with a smile on his face. This guest, according to the regulations, this product does not belong to you yet. If you want to continue to participate, please go to the backstage to pay the corresponding amount after the auction ends. Carlos gently stroked the blade without raising his head. Oh, what else is good next? The other party's eyes lit up and he introduced him eloquently. The next step is the slave stage. We got a lot of top quality stuff this time. The mighty hockey, an adult male from the giant race, is the perfect choice to act as a bodyguard. It will also give you face when you take him out. Young and beautiful mermaid beauties with hot figures. Looking at your figure, I can buy a few to play at home. Carlos shook his head slightly. Slave. Not interested. 
Then, please follow the staff to the backstage and complete the corresponding handover procedures. Handover procedures. Sorry, Lousy has no money. As soon as these words came out, the whole place fell into silence. Everyone cast surprised and incomprehensible looks. No money. The host thought he heard it wrong and confirmed it again. Carlos sneered. You really think Lousy is taken advantage of, don't you? I don't know who is behind this place, and I don't care. This knife is good. It's time to return to my roots. Listen up, Lousy's name is Garros. This sentence was like a bomb that instantly detonated the entire auction venue. Garros. Never heard of it. After working on it for a long time, it turns out that this guy is here to cause trouble on purpose. Dare to make trouble here, doesn't he know the background of this auction house? If it had been normal, he would have just been beaten and it would have been over. But this time he ruined Charlotte Dafu and Bista's good deeds. Now it's a good show. This kid has probably never heard of the names of these two people. Ignorant people or fearless. This is the kind of people they are talking about. The audience was buzzing, and the noisy discussion came like a roaring mountain in a tsunami. Dafu snorted coldly. Garros. Who do I think he is, just a newcomer who just went to see. Ever since One Piece Roger was executed, he issued the declaration of One Piece in front of the whole world. The whole world is boiling. Countless people choose to become pirates for wealth, power, and dreams, and go to sea to find the so-called great secret treasure. There are also some outstanding ones who have made it all the way to the second half of the Grand Line, New World. To challenge the authority of the Sea Emperor for the sake of ambition. But over the years, these challengers have either become subordinate to the Pirate Emperor, or they have lost their lives and sunk into the sea. He had seen many stupid young people like this, and he was already used to it. This 21-piece sharp knife is not something that a nobody like you can get your hands on. If you don't want to die, just put down what you are holding. Carlos shook his head. If you want to conquer the new world, a good weapon is essential. This knife is good, it belongs to me now. A new pirate star who wants to conquer the second half of the Grand Line. This is the persona he created for himself. He will soon join the Beast's pirates in this capacity. Carlos doesn't want to start from the bottom. Before joining, the bigger the reputation, the better. As for the other party's warning, he took it completely to heart. If I remember correctly, the guy in front of me has a bounty of 300 million belly, and he is a Paramesha transpiration fruit user. Some strength, but not much. Dafu gradually lost his patience. Boy, I'll give you one last chance. Now put down what you are holding, cut off one of your arms, and let this be over. Otherwise, despite the threatening warning from the other party, Carlos remained calm. Fight. That's what I want. I heard that you are a leader of the BIGMOM pirates. Should it be qualified to be Lousy's first stepping stone in conquering the new world? The words just fell. With a slight exertion on his right hand, layers of black armament hockey were wrapped around the blade. But just for a short moment, the color of the blade became extremely dark. Even from a distance of more than 10 meters, you can feel a breathtaking sense of oppression. A stern look flashed in Dafu's eyes, and he touched the belt on his abdomen with both hands. Huh. Such a skilled armament hockey. You are proud enough of the first half of the Grand Line. No wonder you have the confidence to be so arrogant. Forget it, let this stupid young man like you experience the vastness of the world. If you want to survive in the new world, armament hockey is almost a must-have skill. Although Dafu was a little surprised, he didn't lose his composure. As the third son of an ant. His vision, experience, and strength are beyond what this newcomer can match. The two people's eyes collided fiercely in midair. The atmosphere in the auction venue became depressing and heavy. The battle is about to break out. At this moment, in the backstage of the auction venue, a muscular old man with white hair was sitting cross-legged in an iron cage. He was obviously a slave about to be auctioned, but there was no trace of nervousness or anxiety on his face. Instead, he held an iron wine flask and drank slowly. Suddenly, the old man seemed to feel something, and turned his head to look in a certain direction, with a surprised look in his eyes. This momentum. Someone actually chooses to duel here. It's interesting. Who ruined my good deeds? In the horrified eyes of the surrounding slaves. 
The old man stretched out his hand and easily tore open the iron railing in front of him. While drinking, he calmly walked toward the exhibition hall. Carlos and Dafu were more than 10 meters apart, facing each other from a distance. The atmosphere in the auction venue also became more and more solemn, making people a little breathless. Everyone present is not an idle person, and they can vaguely feel the strength of both sides. This newcomer named Garros doesn't seem to be without merit. Compared with the auction, the battle between these two strong men is much more interesting. Everyone held their breath and focused on the two of them. Time passes slowly. Sudden. Without any warning, Dafu took the lead and moved, crunching. His hands rubbed violently on the belt around his abdomen. Only a bang was heard. A cloud of smoke spurted out from his waist. In midair, he quickly transformed into a demon holding a huge sword. Although he only had his upper body, he looked extremely tall and strong. Demon Slayer. Along with the order issued by Dafu. The jinn crossed a distance of more than 10 meters and appeared in front of Carlos in an instant. He raised the guando with both hands high and chopped it off at the head with lightning speed. A sharp and piercing whistling sound suddenly sounded in everyone's ears. This blow was so powerful that even the air seemed to be exploded by it. What? What is this? What an amazing momentum. The user with Paramesh's transpiration fruit ability, the demon he summoned is extremely powerful. I don't know how many strong men have died at the hands of this monster. As the third son of the Emperor of the Sea, Charlotte Linlin, he truly deserves his reputation. What a quick blow. This kid probably won't be able to dodge it. Is this battle going to end in an instant? At this moment, countless spectators in the audience were shocked, with deep fear in their eyes. Ask yourself, if it were them, they wouldn't be able to block this powerful and domineering blow. However, the screams they expected did not come out. The demon's attack struck the empty air. Avoided. How is that possible? Dafu froze in place, just as he was about to make the next move. A gentle sigh suddenly sounded in my ears. Your intention is too obvious. The sound was not loud, but it was like thunder exploding on the ground. Dafu's pupils shrank, and a strong death threat suddenly surged in his heart. Without any hesitation, he quickly put his hands in front of him like an instinct, and urged Armament Hockey to strengthen his whole body as if desperately trying. It's useless. With the reinforcement of Armament Hockey, even the cannonballs can't cause any damage to Lousy. The next moment, a black shadow quickly passed by, setting off gusts of wind. The sharp sword light quietly erupted in the void and disappeared in a flash. Dafu's face froze. Suddenly I felt an unstoppable force of terror sweeping over me. PFF. Blood spurts. The wrist was completely broken, and there was a huge scar on the abdomen with bones visible. Almost cutting the whole person in half. Ah. The pain that surged in like a tide caused Dafu to let out a scream. Then his vision went dark, he couldn't help but roll his eyes, fell heavily to the ground, and passed out. All this happened in a brief moment of lightning. Until the end of the battle, everyone present seemed to have not come back to their senses. After a while, looking at Dafu lying in a pool of blood, everyone in the audience swallowed secretly, and their faces became extremely solemn. No, it can't be. Is this the end? The bounty is as high as 300 million belly and the cadres of the BIGMOM pirates were killed instantly with a knife. Are you kidding me? Garros. A strong man with such strength is still a newcomer. That's right, why doesn't this guy have a reward? Are all marines idiots? Foil, Bista ignored the noisy discussions around him. He stood up suddenly and stared at the booth. What a powerful blow, what a domineering sword. What a great newcomer. A shadowed corner of the auction booth. The white-haired old man hid behind the curtain and took a big gulp of wine. Compared to others. Instead, he completely saw everything that just happened. It seems that the big guy launched the attack first, but in fact, his every move has been clearly sensed by the opponent's observation hockey. Dodge at the moment the opponent is about to succeed, and launch a counterattack. The timing of dodge, the speed of the explosion, the strength of the slash. Everything is just right. To say what surprised him the most. It was the armament hockey wrapped around the blade at the moment the young man launched his attack. This kind of armament hockey is hard to believe that a young man in his 20s can own. To reach this level, it will take at least 10 or 20 years of fighting and training. 
Even he couldn't reach such a level when the other party was his age. The old man muttered to himself. A hint of appreciation flashed deep in his eyes. Amazing two-color hockey, good swordsmanship. He has been staying in the Sabayati archipelago over the years since the Roger Pirates disbanded. I watched batch after batch of juniors enter the new world. This was the first time he had seen such an outstanding newcomer. Thinking this way, the interest in the old man's eyes became more intense, and he couldn't help but take a big sip of wine. On the booth, Carlos used a little force with his right hand to shake off the bits of bloodline on the hidden mine, and then slowly inserted it into the scabbard. His cold eyes scanned the whole place. The power of the sword just now seemed to be vivid in his mind. Whether it is the most vicious pirate or the princes and nobles of various kingdoms. At this moment, they all closed their mouths and lowered their heads, not daring to look at him. The huge auction venue suddenly fell silent. Carlos raised the corners of his mouth slightly and took steps to leave. At this time, a figure suddenly stopped in front of him. You beat the cadres of the BIGMOM pirates to the point where they were seriously injured and on the verge of death. Aren't you afraid of Charlotte Linlin's revenge? Carlos looked at the visitor and frowned slightly. Huh. Do you want to stop me too? Bista slowly pulled out the two long swords from his waist and pointed them diagonally. At your age, you actually have such strength. I have to say, it is indeed beyond my imagination. Since we are both swordsmen, why not come and compete? Then, he added another sentence. Of course, just competing is a bit boring. How about adding some bonuses? If you lose, keep this 21-piece sharp knife in your hand. A sparring match between swordsmen. It's nothing more than a boring excuse for greed. Carlos sneered inwardly. However, he did not refuse or agree, but asked. What if I win? Bista was stunned for a moment, then laughed heartily. If you can defeat me by chance, I will recommend you to my father as the captain of the Whitebeard Pirates. Become the captain of the Whitebeard Pirates. As soon as Bista said these words, the silent people in the audience took a deep breath. What? This? From a newcomer, directly joining the command of the Sea Emperor Whitebeard, and becoming a cadre. This is simply a step to the top. Is this guy's strength so strong? What a joke. I don't think there is any problem. This guy named Garros is indeed very strong. It seems that the Whitebeard pirates are about to add a new powerful general. After the shock, everyone lowered their voices and started discussing quietly. It's not that simple. Although this boy has good strength, that's where it ends. Yes, Vista is the captain of the 5th division of the Whitebeard Pirates. How easy is it to defeat him? It is rumored that this guy has already reached the level of a great swordsman. If this kid is smart, he should put down the famous sword in his hand immediately and leave here. Maybe he can also use this to make friends with the Whitebeard Pirates. A person's name, the shadow of a tree. Who is Whitebeard? It is a powerful existence that can rival the pirate King Roger. As early as 20 years ago, Vista joined the Whitebeard Pirates. He has gone through countless battles, big and small, fought against countless powerful enemies, and gained a great reputation. Carlos frowned slightly. Become the captain of the Whitebeard Pirates. That's right. I heard that everyone on your ship calls Whitebeard Daddy. Sorry, I don't have this habit. Bista stroked his beard. Many people have the same idea as you, and it doesn't matter. We, the Whitebeard Pirates, are a big family. Of course, it doesn't matter if you really don't want to join. I won't force you, but. Keep this knife. Bista nodded without hesitation. Then he looked at the scabbard on Carlos' waist, his eyes extremely hot. As a pirate, if you want to get something, just grab it directly. There is no need to be secretive. This is also the code of conduct they believe in. Carlos smiled. With a, swish, sound, he drew out the hidden thunder and pointed it straight at the opponent. Want it? Then it depends on whether you have the ability. In that case, I'm not polite. It's just that the sword has no eyes. If you die because of this, I hope you won't resent me then. You can only blame yourself for being inferior to others. As soon as he finished speaking, Vista instantly disappeared from everyone's sight. The next moment, it appeared in midair. Rose dance. The two swords in his hands set off a series of afterimages. Countless red rose petals fell from midair. No one has reacted yet. I saw countless rose petals turning into sharp slashes, blooming in all directions. 
Beneath the gorgeous appearance, there is infinite murderous intent. Countless slashes poured down from midair, instantly building an airtight death cage. Carlos was surrounded by everyone. Facing this stormy offensive. Carlos's face remained expressionless, but his eyes revealed a strong, fighting spirit. He took a deep breath, and instead of retreating, he stepped forward. The muscles all over his body are bulging. Reflected by the light from the ceiling, it exudes bursts of dark metallic luster. Armament hockey hardened. Armament hockey entangled. Shave. In the world of pirates, Marine Six Styles is no secret among the truly strong. As long as your physical fitness is up to standard, you can learn it quickly. This will not reveal the identity of CP0. At this moment, Carlos' speed is almost ultimate. He waved the dark thunder in his hand. Boom. The ear-piercing roar quietly exploded in everyone's ears. The energy exploded. The surrounding tables, chairs, and floor tiles were instantly reduced to countless debris. The two of them stepped back dozens of steps and looked at each other solemnly. What? Did you actually block it? Can you block such a terrifying attack? Could it be that this guy has reached the level of a great swordsman in terms of swordsmanship? Impossible, absolutely impossible. How old is he? Has he been practicing since he was born? Everyone in the audience was so surprised that their jaws almost dropped to the ground. There were also several powerful swordsmen with bounties worth over 100 million. Although the two only had a brief duel, it seemed to open a new door for them. A strong sense of frustration could not help but arise in my heart. In the shadows behind the scenes, Rayleigh stared intently at the two fighting at the auction venue. He accidentally crushed the iron wine bottle in his hand. Is this his true strength? It's really amazing. That's right. This young man named Garros is indeed not as good as Bista, the long-famous great swordsman, in terms of swordsmanship. But when it comes to hockey, especially armament hockey, he is not inferior to the opponent at all, and even far better. Under Bista's dazzling sword skills that hide endless murderous intent. The observation hockey emitted by Garros accurately sensed the impact point of the opponent's slash. A considerable degree of hockey strengthening is performed on the parts about to be attacked. No matter it is the quality or quantity of the armed color. The two sides are not on the same level at all. He didn't dodge or evade, and chose to fight head on with the opponent. Plus the famous sword in his hand. Even when facing a long famous great swordsman, this young man not only did not fall at a disadvantage, but was evenly matched with the opponent. No. Garros can make many mistakes, but Bista's one mistake may determine the outcome. Thinking of this, Rayleigh's face began to turn serious. Although he has long since retired from the world. But Bista was no stranger to him. The Whitebeard Pirates and the Roger Pirates have fought many battles. Although Bista is not up to the level of top experts, he is still a good player. I can't say that he's not good, I can only say that this guy named Garros, Armament Hockey, is too powerful. Even Rayleigh herself is only slightly stronger than this young man. Garros, where did this freak come from? If nothing else happens, a new storm is about to break out in this sea. At this time, it was difficult to see Carlos and Vista clearly in the auction venue. Only the roaring and deafening sounds of clashing swords could be heard. The roof, walls, and floors began to break apart. Smoke and dust are everywhere. The aftermath of the fight between the two left the entire auction venue crumbling and about to collapse. How could such a fierce battle break out? What are you doing standing there stupidly? Run away. It's no longer safe here. The people watching in the audience no longer cared much, and left their seats one after another to get away from here. The narrow corridor was crowded with people, and people were pushing and shoving, shouting and cursing. At this moment, a domineering momentum suddenly swept across the entire audience. Most people immediately rolled their eyes, fell to the ground with a thud, and fainted. The remaining few people also froze in place, stopped unconsciously, and turned back to look at the booth with difficulty. Disturbed by this momentum, Carlos and Vista also agreed to call a truce. The shadows behind the scenes. An old man with white beard and hair wearing glasses slowly walked out. Although he is old, he exudes a domineering aura. You two are both very good, you shouldn't be fighting to the death here. Give me some face, let's leave it at that. By the way, I forgot to introduce myself, my name is Silver Rayleigh. 
As he said that, the old man turned his head and looked at Carlos. Young man, you have a good talent. Do you want me to be your teacher? After a brief moment of dead silence, the whole place was in an uproar. What? Is this old man the deputy captain of Roger the Pirate King? Pluton, Rayleigh. Why would such a legendary figure appear here? Wait. What did he just say? Want to be this guy's teacher? Did I hear you correctly? Everyone looked at the old man in the stands, and then turned their attention to Carlos. As long as this guy nods his head now, he can become Rayleigh's disciple immediately. Don't say anything else. Just based on the adventures of this pirate king's deputy throughout the Grand Line and the connections he has. It is a huge wealth that is unimaginable to ordinary people. How to keep them from feeling envious and jealous. I wish I could agree to it for the other party right now. Under the envious and jealous gazes of everyone, Carlos didn't show any special reaction, he just felt a little funny. In terms of teaching level, teacher guy is much better. Besides, with the help of the system, sooner or later he will stand at the top of the sea. There is really no need to spend a lot of time with an old man. Carlos shook his head and rejected Rayleigh bluntly. If you're not interested, you'd better find someone else. Everyone looked at Carlos blankly. Doubt, shock. All kinds of emotions filled my heart, and it was difficult to calm down for a long time. He, is he crazy? That's not wrong, right? You actually rejected Pluton Rayleigh's invitation. This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Rayleigh didn't expect to get such an answer. She raised her eyebrows and said. Boy, do you really not want to think about it anymore? Carlos dealt with it casually while looking around. At this time, the sound of uniform footsteps suddenly came from the door of the auction venue. Look around. Densely packed marine soldiers were arranged in square formations, completely surrounding the place. Swish, swish, swish. Countless black guns were pointed at everyone in the venue. Between the squares, a man wearing a helmet, a ferocious expression, and a white, justice, cape slowly walked over. It's rare to come to Sabayati Archipelago. I didn't expect that pirates would dare to cause trouble here. A marine soldier stepped forward quickly, stood upright, and saluted vigorously. Report. Vice Admiral, according to your instructions, all exits to the auction have been blocked, ensuring that not even a fly can fly out. 100 artillery pieces have also been set up, and reinforcements from the rest of the island are also here come this way. Ghost Spider bit his cigar, nodded slightly, and looked towards the auction venue. People inside, listen to me, put down your weapons and surrender obediently. Otherwise, shoot to death. Looking at the heavily armed marine soldiers at the door. The faces of everyone present became extremely different. Why did marine come so fast? I didn't expect that the leader of the team would be the ghost spider from our headquarters. What a shame. The battle between these two people must have been too loud. It's really fooled. What are you afraid of? There are so many of us, why are we afraid of guys like Marine? Don't forget, there is a legendary pirate here, Pluton Rayleigh is in charge, and it's just a ghost spider. At this time, Carlos suddenly shouted to the door. Sir, Vice Admiral, you can't catch the legendary Pluton Rayleigh with this alone. I suggest you call Admiral for support as soon as possible. Ha ha ha. This sentence instantly exploded in the crowd. Ghost Spider was startled and quickly walked into the auction venue. The next moment, his eyes narrowed and suddenly revealed a sharp gaze. Pluton Rayleigh. Rayleigh didn't pay attention to Marine outside, but turned to look at Carlos helplessly. You kid. Wait, what are you doing? Carlos found a big bag somewhere and was stuffing auction items into it with quick hands and feet. Senior Rayleigh, I've only heard of your name, but I don't know what your abilities are. If you can't even handle this kind of situation, you are not qualified to be my teacher. See you in the future if we are destined. After saying that, Carlos put the full bag on his shoulders with great satisfaction and exerted force under his feet. Boom. Accompanied by a loud bang. The ground seemed to be pressed hard by an invisible giant hand. Bricks and stones scattered everywhere. Spider web-like cracks spread rapidly in all directions. Carlos soared into the sky and jumped into the air. Vallo. With a crisp whistle, a giant eagle with a total length of more than 10 meters soared up in the strong wind, and soon disappeared from everyone's sight. 
The pirates in the auction venue were trembling with anger and shouting curses. What? This got away with it and left us here. This guy is a zone bird fruit ability user, no wonder he is so confident. I've been tricked. Is it possible that he called Marine here? What's the point of talking so much now? Let's fight with Marine. The ghost spider looked solemn and took a puff of his cigar. Everyone is here, ready to meet the enemy. You, take this phone bug and notify headquarters immediately. Let Marshal Sengoku send support. Holy Land Mariajoy. The meeting room in Pangu City. Several imposing men in suits were leaning on the sofa. Opposite them, Stussy was half kneeling on the ground, reporting something. Brew brew brew. The phone bug's voice rang suddenly, interrupting the conversation. Saint Satan showed dissatisfaction. What's the matter? Sengoku. Huh. Sabayati Archipelago, pirate. What? Pluton Rayleigh. I see. The gaff made the other people look at him sideways. After hanging up the phone, Saint Satan took a deep breath and looked at everyone. Pirates were causing trouble at the auction on Sabayati Island No. 1, and Pluton Rayleigh also appeared at the scene. Huh. Hasn't this old guy retired a long time ago? I guess it's because pirates are used to it. If they don't die, let's come out and get another vote. The five elders with short blonde hair on the side suddenly remembered something and frowned. Island number one, auction. That guy Charlos often goes back there. He. Don't worry, he's not here today. In addition, Sengoku has sent Kazaru to the scene. Together with the ghost spider and thousands of marines on the scene, it is estimated that the riot will be quelled soon. Only then did everyone feel at ease. Isn't the Sabayati archipelago always good? How could such a bad incident suddenly happen? It seems that it was caused by a new pirate named Garros. This guy tried to snatch the auction items, seriously injured Charlotte Daifuku, and also got into trouble with Bista of the Whitebeard Pirates. I heard that he has a good talent, and he was spotted by Rayleigh and wanted to accept him as his disciple. I don't know if it's true or not. The skinny five elders wearing white robes and holding a long knife said coldly. It doesn't matter, no matter how good your qualifications are. Prepare to spend the rest of your life in Impel Down. No, according to the on-site report, this guy seems to be a zone bird fruit ability user. He transformed into a big eagle and left Marine's encirclement. Hearing this, Stussy's eyes lit up, he raised his head and said uncertainly. My lords, this pirate named Garros is very likely one of ours. Our people. The five elders on the sofa sat up straight and cast doubtful glances. Stussy smoothed the blonde curls around her ears and slowly revealed all the undercover plans she had made previously. After listening to this, several people couldn't help but look at each other. Yes, for the world government, Kaido, the remnant of rocks, is indeed a big threat. It is indeed necessary to send people to lurk in beasts pirates to collect intelligence. Stussy, I didn't expect you to have already started making preparations. Good job. My lords, you are exaggerating. This is just my job. The five elders with long white beards suddenly asked. Since this guy named Carlos is one of ours, why are we still causing trouble in the Sabayati archipelago? I have also heard about the underground auction on island number. 1. Not to mention that there were many officials and nobles from the participating countries at the scene. People in Mariajoy often go there to select slaves. As CP0, he won't know this. Although Carlos is dealing with pirates, if someone is accidentally injured, it will still bring some unnecessary negative effects to the world government. Stussy explained helplessly. Saint Satan raised his eyebrows with a slightly surprised expression. I see. In order to dispel Kaido's suspicion and successfully join the beast's pirates, he is even willing to risk being captured by Marine and take the initiative to be wanted and put a bounty on his head. Several other people nodded secretly, approvingly. Yes, this young man is capable of big things. He can easily defeat the cadres of the BIGMOM pirates, and he can even compete with the swordsman level warriors. This guy is different from ordinary people in terms of strength and courage. How can there be such an outstanding talent in CP0? Stussy hesitated for a while and said softly. Actually, I just transferred Carlos from CP9 to CP0. Because of certain things, he and Spangdane have some personal grudges. Listen to what Carlos has experienced over the years. Saint Satan waved his hand indifferently. 
Have you been performing undercover missions since you joined CP5? It's impeccable in every aspect. Carlos is indeed the perfect candidate for this mission. You have a good vision. He can take such a big risk to safeguard the interests of world government, and we will naturally cooperate fully. I will give a warning to Spangdine so that he does not have to worry and concentrate on dealing with the beast's pirates. In addition, issue a reward order and ask the World Economic News Agency to immediately publish a newspaper to build momentum for him. Sabayati Archipelago, Island Port No. 1. Five ships with the skull flag of the, blood sail pirates, docked in the harbor. One of the three masted sailboats was particularly huge, surrounded by stars like a crescent moon in the center. Dozens of pirates are constantly carrying goods into the warehouse. Standing at the bow of the deck was an unusually tall and muscular man wearing a black cloak, five meters tall. He held a telescope and looked solemnly towards the island. As early as ten minutes ago, violent explosions kept coming from the center of the island. There's also the sudden appearance of large numbers of marines. The sudden abnormality made him feel uneasy. What happened over there? Captain Tucker. All supplies have been loaded. The report from his men brought him back to his thoughts. Whatever. The five ships have been coated and the supplies are ready. It's time to leave here and go to the new world. Captain Tucker put away the telescope in his hand and said in a deep voice. Little ones. Put away the anchor and set sail. Target, the Fishmen Island. At this time, a cry of surprise suddenly came from the observation deck above. Captain Tucker, there's a situation. Sky. Everyone on the deck looked up. High in the sky, a black spot slowly appeared and continued to grow. What is that? Why does it look like a bird? No. It's flying this way. It's so fast. Get down and take cover. Hold on tight. There was chaos on the deck. Next moment. The huge black shadow was carried by the howling wind and landed steadily in the middle of the deck. Countless sharp feathers shot out in all directions like a torrential rain. Ah. A large piece of the pirate's present fell instantly like wheat. After a brief period of confusion, the others quickly reacted. Without thinking, he drew out the sword and axe he carried with him and rushed towards the uninvited guest. Enemy attack. Enemy attack. How dare you come to die alone. Kill him. Let this guy see the power of the blood sail pirates. When they were about to launch an attack, dozens of people in the distance held up firecrackers and took the lead in pulling the trigger. Bang bang bang. As the gunpowder smoke filled the air, countless hot bullets were fired over the sky. Under the dense crossfire net, the opponent lowered his head and turned sideways from time to time, dodging all the bullets in a leisurely manner. Sudden. He disappeared instantly and turned into afterimages, passing through the crowd like lightning. Ah. Ah. Accompanied by bursts of screams. Seven or eight pirates were penetrated through the heart every second and they could not make any reaction until they died. In just a few seconds, the deck was already littered with corpses. What happened? So fast. This guy is so strong. When the other pirates who had not yet had time to take action saw this scene, they quickly took a few steps back and cast frightened looks. You all, please step back, lousy. Accompanied by a rough scolding sound. Captain Tucker, who was like a giant, walked over with a giant 10-meter-long hammer on his shoulders. Every step he took made the deck beneath his feet tremble. Lousy is the captain of the blood sail pirates, Tucker the hammer. You can kill my men so easily. You are pretty strong. Boy, tell me your name. The man flicked the bloodline on his finger and said casually. My name is Garros. Are you the captain of this pirate group? This ship is good, and it belongs to Lousy now. As for you, get lost. Captain Tucker laughed angrily. Are you kidding? It's just one person boarding Lousy's boat, and you want us to get off. Who do you think you are? The Pirate King. Others also spoke in agreement. Boy, haven't you read the newspaper? Captain Tucker is a big pirate with a bounty of 150 million belly. He is called the Pirate Supernova. Our captain has a powerful physique comparable to that of the giants. He can easily wield a giant hammer weighing 5 tons. Even cannonballs cannot cause any harm to him. I'm kind enough to tell you. We are the Blood Sail Pirates. We have five battleships and nearly a thousand subordinates. So what can you do if you can fight? One person's saliva is enough to drown you. Captain, stop talking nonsense to this guy. 
Tucker licked his lips, with a bloodthirsty and cruel smile on his face. Sorry, we are in a hurry to go to the new world, and we don't have time to play some pirate house games with you here. Let's use you as an appetizer to conquer the new world. Boy, draw your weapon. Lousy gives you a chance to fight. Captain Tucker wielded the giant hammer with one hand and pointed it straight at the opponent. The giant hammer weighing five tons was like a child's toy in his hand. As the captain of the Blood Sail Pirates, he made up his mind to go to the New World. Tucker also has strength and courage that ordinary people cannot match. Although our own numbers completely overwhelmed the opponents. But he was still very willing to show off his bravery in front of his men. Carlos shook his head. A weakling like you is not qualified to let Lousy draw his sword. These words completely angered the other party. Arrogant. Tucker swung the giant hammer and hit the opponent head on. The swinging giant hammer set off a violent wind pressure. No one had any doubt, as if this powerful blow could shatter the entire deck. Too slow. Carlos turned slightly and commented casually. Then he raised his right fist and punched forward. Boom. A violent impact like a landslide and tsunami swept through. Tucker's body shook, and the expression on his face froze instantly. The giant hammer raised high came out of his hand and flew down into the sea, splashing high water. The huge body like a hill slowly fell down and hit the deck with a loud roar. But, does my ambition end here? Tucker gritted his teeth tightly, and after muttering unwillingly, he completely lost his breath. Carlos clapped his hands. It was as if he had completed a trivial task casually without taking it to heart at all. Standing on the deck of the main ship, like a god of war, his eyes scanned the entire scene. The faces of the pirates on the surrounding pirate ships changed drastically. It was as if his heart was being clenched so tightly that even his breathing was stagnant. Then, is that guy really a human? He killed more than a hundred people at once. Even Captain Tucker was killed by him. What a monster. What are you afraid of? We still have more than 800 people and 200 artillery pieces. No matter how strong you are, you are still made of flesh and blood. The pirate ships began to turn around and pointed their sides towards this side. On the deck, cannons were pushed out one after another, and several people were busy loading ammunition. Wait a minute. Vice Captain Yorick and the officers are ready to take action. Every one of the officers of the Blood Sail Pirates is a strong man with a bounty of tens of millions of belly. If the four of them come together, they will definitely be able to defeat that monster. In the eyes of expectation, four figures slowly appeared on the decks of four pirate ships. However, they showed a posture of alert as if facing a powerful enemy. I actually killed Captain Tucker. Since this guy is looking for death, we will help him. Let's go together and kill him. Don't be careless, this guy is very powerful. If we don't avenge this revenge, how will we be able to gain a foothold on the sea in the future? Take action. The words just fell. The four people swayed and rushed in the direction of Carlos. Two of them instantly transformed into the half-orc forms of lions and walruses during the rush. They were tall and tall, with ferocious faces and wide mouths. Not only is the momentum terrifying, the speed is also unimaginably fast. White air waves rolled up behind him, and the decks along the way exploded. The other two guys dressed as swordsmen jumped high into the air. One person was holding two swords, and the other person was wielding a giant sword, and they slashed hard at Carlos. Carlos sighed helplessly. It's just a ride, there's no need to fight you to the death, right? The next moment, several groups of black shadows shot out and hit the four people hard on the face. Suddenly, People fell on their backs and screamed in agony. What the hell? Vice Captain Yorick came to his senses instantly, stretched out his hand to grab it, and froze on the spot. This, is this a blood jade agate pendant? As a pirate who burned, killed, and plundered, he more or less had the eye for identifying treasures. The blood jade agate on this pendant is crystal clear and bright in color. It looks like it is of high quality at first glance. If it were put up for auction, it would start at least a few million baileys. Wait, is this the coral ring from the Fishmen Island Sea Forest? Not far away from him, another cadre exclaimed and released his sword. He held up a delicate ring high and looked at the sun to carefully identify the sapphire inlaid on it. A look of obsession slowly appeared on his face. 
I'm afraid only the noble kings are qualified to wear this rare and exquisite product. The four of them looked at Carlos in confusion. You, what do you mean? Carlos smiled slightly. You mean this kind of thing? Lousy has many more. Bang. Throwing down the large package on your shoulders. Countless exquisite and extraordinary jewelry pieces were scattered on the deck. Under the sunlight, it exudes charming pearls. Everyone in the audience was stunned for a moment, and their Adam's apple could not help but roll up and down. Your Excellency, who is this person? Why? Carlos spread his hands. Nothing, I just had itchy hands and ransacked the auction on island number. 1. I heard that you are also going to the New World. Why not come together? Now that he is a pirate, he not only has to face Marine's pursuit, but he also has to be careful of other pirate groups at all times. Although Carlos has great confidence in his own strength. But he also understands the dangers of the new world, and accidents will inevitably happen if you are alone. From the perspective of his years as an undercover agent. The Blood Sail Pirates are definitely the most powerful pirate group he has encountered in the past few years. There are not only nearly a thousand subordinates, but also five battleships. The vice captain and several other cadres are also guys with bounties of tens or even hundreds of millions. Navigators, cooks, lookouts, helmsmen, gunners, handymen, etc. are all available. If they could be persuaded to take him to Wanokuni, the trip would be much easier. And the price was just a bunch of auction items that were useless to him just from the auction. Let's go to New World together. This. After hearing what Carlos said, several people looked at each other, not knowing what to say for a moment. But, but you killed Captain Tucker. Don't be stupid. This guy can kill the captain with one move. He is definitely a ruthless person. Even if we go together, we probably won't get any benefits. We have to go to the new world anyway, so why not give each other a ride along the way? It's not my style to swallow my anger like this. Although they are greedy, they have not completely lost their minds. Accept each other's travel expenses, shake hands and make peace, and head to the new world together. Or risk your life and swarm up, kill the guy in front of you, avenge the captain, and steal his treasure at the same time. Everyone looked very confused and couldn't make up their minds. The rest of the pirates also stopped what they were doing and paid attention to this area. Carlos folded his arms and waited for a long time, then smiled and said. Have you decided yet? After some discussion, several cadres of the Blood Sail Pirates agreed to Carlos's conditions. They also thought about killing this guy in front of everyone to avenge Captain Tucker. By the way, establish authority and become the new captain. But the combat power shown by Carlos was too terrifying. Captain Tucker who has a physique comparable to that of the giants and has a bounty of 150 million baileys, is no match for this guy. Kill him. No one present was fully sure. Rather than doing this risky thing, it would be better to escort Carlos to Wanokuni. After all, the rewards promised by the other party are extremely attractive. A rough estimate is that the value of these auction items is almost 300 million belly. After both parties reached an agreement, the Bloodsail Pirates left the port of Sabayati Archipelago. Dive to 10,000 meters under the sea and come to the Fishmen Island. After a short stay for a day, we headed towards the second half of the Grand Line, New World. Sunny. A parasol was erected on the deck of the Bloodsail Pirates' main ship, and a small round table was placed next to it. There is a glass of juice with ice cubes on the table. Carlos, who was wearing a floral green shirt, put his hands behind his head, lay on a beach chair, and enjoyed sunbathing. This is the permanent pointer and chart you requested. Vice Captain Yorick held a large package and placed it in front of Carlos. They spent most of the day shopping on the Fishmen Island, and spent a lot of effort to get these from shops, black markets and other channels. If it weren't for the fact that the other party offered an errand fee that they couldn't refuse, they wouldn't have worked so hard. After hearing what the other party said, Carlos pushed away his sunglasses, casually picked up a permanent pointer and put it on his wrist. I heard that the climate in New World is unpredictable. I'd better let you navigators study the charts carefully. I don't want the ship to capsize halfway through the voyage. Yorick raised his eyebrows, a little unconvinced. What are you talking about? Our navigator team is the most famous in the entire North Blue. Since we have accepted this commission, we will naturally deliver you safely. That's good. 
When we arrive at Wanokuni, I will give you the rest of the reward. It's better to have money. Yorick sighed, with a look of regret on his face. I heard that a mermaid can be sold for tens of millions of belly at the auction in Sabayati. If you weren't in a hurry, ah. Uh, don't be stupid. Let's not mention that the Fishmen Island has tens of thousands of Dragon Palace guards. It is also the territory covered by the Whitebeard Pirates. If something goes wrong, you all have to stay there. Carlos didn't care much about money, as long as it was enough. As a person with normal outlook, he would not want to touch such things as kidnapping and human trafficking, let alone offending the Fishmen Island. He is not afraid of trouble, but he also doesn't want to cause trouble for nothing. Reaching Wanokuni's undercover beasts pirates is his current priority. Carlos understood. In this world, strength is king. If you could have the strength of Marine Admiral or Kaido Whitebeard, what would you not want? Yorick sighed. Just saying, but having said that, I really envy you. It's great to have money. Carlos gave the other person a strange look. Aren't you called the pirate supernova? Why do you look so poor and look like you've never seen money? Well, it's Tucker's fault. We came here from North Blue and robbed five or six small towns on the way. In total, we also robbed hundreds of millions of bellies worth of treasure. It turns out that this guy spent all his money on refitting warships and buying weapons and cannons, so none of us made any money. Thinking of this, Yorick couldn't help but secretly complain in his heart. But okay, even though the captain was dead, they were lucky enough to meet this fat sheep. Now I suddenly have a lot more money. Let's have a party to celebrate our arrival in the new world. The banquet was filled with people drinking and drinking, and the atmosphere was lively. The pirates were talking loudly while drinking heavily. To be honest, One Piece World is also a mecca for seafood lovers. Sea cucumber, sea urchin, abalone, king crab and the like can only be regarded as low-quality ingredients here. Thanks to Carlos. The chefs of the Blood Sail Pirates purchased a new batch of rare ingredients from the Fishmen Island. After a while, plates of hot barbecue were brought to the table. The attractive color and rich aroma made Carlos swallow his saliva. He raised his knife and fork and put a piece of meat into his mouth. After chewing it carefully, his eyes suddenly lit up. It's hard to say what kind of meat it is. The meat is fresh, smooth and tender. It can be said that it melts in your mouth. After one bite, the full meat juice overflows and fills the entire mouth. Not only does it taste great, but the taste after being cooked by the chef is also top-notch. Salty, spicy, and endlessly memorable. Even Wagyu beef cannot match this quality. Carlos smacked his lips, abandoned the knife and fork and began to eat. But in just a short moment, the barbecue for ten people on the table was completely eaten. Everyone present raised their knives and forks in the air, staring at the empty plates on the table. Yorick laughed heartily. How's it going? The food on our ship is delicious, right? I might as well tell you that our chef is also the most famous in North Blue. Carlos picked up a napkin and wiped the grease from the corners of his mouth. Is there more? Please serve 50 more people. You guys, don't underestimate our blood sail pirates. Hey, let the chef hurry up. The kitchen is on full blast. Countless plates of delicious food were served. Carlos held a wine bottle in one hand and a barbecue in the other, destroying the food in front of him with a whirlwind. Around him, countless empty plates were stacked together to form a small mountain. But he didn't seem to be satisfied, and his hand movements showed no intention of stopping. Opening the bow from left to right, he kept grabbing the barbecue and bringing it into his mouth. Among Marine Six styles, his favorite is the return of life. He can control his body to an astonishing degree. These foods are all digested the moment they are eaten, converted into energy and stored in the body. After a while, the head chef hurried out waving a big spoon. Yorick, there is less than half of the food stored on the ship. If this guy continues to eat, we will all starve. Everyone was stunned. I have seen something edible, but I have never seen anything so edible. It's impossible, right? Didn't we purchase another batch of food yesterday? Oh my god, is this man a monster? He ate half of the food that could feed 600 people for a month. It looks like he's not full yet. What an exaggerated appetite this is, it's like an abyss with no bottom. Who the hell is this guy? Everyone was speechless. You looked at me and I looked at you, but no one dared to stop him face to face. 
Quack, quack, quack. Just then, a seabird with a hat and a bag landed on the mast, breaking the awkward atmosphere. Messenger bird. Is something big happening? Vice Captain Yorick sighed and stepped forward to buy a newspaper for 50 belly. After a cursory glance, his expression began to change. As if he wanted to confirm something. He looked up sharply, glanced at Carlos, and then looked at the newspaper suspiciously. He yelled out loud. You. You are the Garros who made a big fuss at Sabayati's auction 10 minutes ago, with a reward of 500 million belly. What? Everyone who was a little drunk suddenly woke up and even thought that there was something wrong with their ears. This is 500 million. Everyone's eyes widened and they shouted in disbelief. Is that correct? There is a reward of 500 million baileys. More than three times that of Captain Tucker. That's right. Didn't this guy say he robbed the auction? These treasures seem to be auction items. Good guy, you even dare to rob the auction in Sabayati. There are a group of incredible big shots there. Could it be that Marine made such a big fuss because of this man? The great pirate with a bounty of 500 million belly, no wonder he dares to fight against our bloodsail pirates alone. Vice Captain Yorick looked solemn and continued reading the newspaper word for word. Not only that, this man also easily defeated the leader of the BIGMOM pirates, Charlotte Daifuku. He also fought against the great swordsman Bista, the captain of the 5th Division of the Whitebeard Pirates, and the two of them couldn't decide the outcome. Hearing this, everyone was stunned, and the wine bottle in their hands fell on the deck unconsciously. What? He, he is actually a great swordsman. Several cadres looked at the sword on Carlos's waist and felt goosebumps all over their bodies. As a great swordsman, he didn't even bother to use his sword and killed Captain Tucker with one punch. This man's strength is simply unfathomable. Thinking of this, several people couldn't help but secretly feel happy. Fortunately, I wasn't impulsive before. Otherwise, I'm afraid they would have ended up in the same fate as Tucker. Yorick lowered his eyes and swallowed hard, his hands holding the newspaper trembling. Not only that, even the Pirate King's vice captain, Pluton Rayleigh, also admired this man and intended to accept him as his disciple, but he refused. The more than 800 people present looked at Carlos blankly, not knowing what to say at all. The series of horrific events even made them feel a little numb. Several cadres looked at each other. As their eyes met, they seemed to have made a decision. Sudden. Plop. Plop. Several cadres at the banquet softened their legs and knelt directly in front of Carlos. This sudden scene made him a little dazed. Carlos put down the huge bone rod in his hand, picked up a tissue and wiped his mouth, curiously saying. What are you doing? Are you too polite? Vice Captain Yorick raised his head and cast a burning gaze. Lord Garros. If you don't mind, please become the new captain of the Bloodsail Pirates. Several other people also shouted in unison. Yes. We are willing to follow you to conquer the new world. Although we don't have Tucker's strength, we can still share a lot of things with you. In the world of pirates, there are some pirate groups that rely on friendship, family ties, and dreams to build bonds. But most of them still rely on interest relationships to get together. They are not stupid, and they know very well that the strong are respected above the sea. As the face of the pirate group, the captain is more powerful and famous, and the more he can bring huge benefits and safety to his subordinates. They were familiar with Carlo's strength, and they could only describe it as terrifying. He was extremely generous, and was willing to pay two to three hundred million belly just to escort him to Wanokuni. He will definitely be generous in treating his subordinates. As for revenge for Captain Tucker. Be realistic, there is no need to ask for trouble. Facing the hot gazes of everyone. Carlos rubbed his chin and nodded slightly. Well, it's not impossible. Although the development of things was somewhat beyond his expectation, it was not a bad thing. The moment I agreed. Suddenly, a cold mechanical prompt sounded in my ears. Ding. The host's identity information has changed, please check. Carlos looked solemn and said silently in his heart. Open the panel. Host. Carlos. Age. 27. Ability, armed color, excellent level, swordsmanship, grandmaster level, wisdom and knowledge, grandmaster level, marine six styles, control level, life return, proficient level. Skill, deep behind enemy lines, shark, bullet technique. Identity, world government, CP0, blood sale pirates, leader. 
On the identity column at the end of the system panel, there is an option for the Blood Sail Pirates leader. After clicking it, a small panel appears. Blood Sail Pirates. Power Evaluation B. Level of Betrayal. In fact, this is not the first time Carlos has encountered this situation. To obtain rewards from the system, two conditions must be fulfilled. 1. Join an organization and become a cadre with power. 2. Commit an act of betrayal to your organization. The higher the combined evaluation of the two, the better the rewards issued by the system. I didn't realize that the Blood Sail Pirates actually have a B-level rating. As expected of the pirate group preparing to go to the New World, they are truly extraordinary. Carlos' eyes lit up. Among the seven large pirate groups that were undercover before, the one with the best evaluation was only C+. Usually he only works as an undercover cadre in the pirate group, but now he becomes the leader for the first time. Just now, he was considering taking these subordinates to join Kaido to gain some weight in his hands. In this case, the original plan can be slightly changed. While Carlos was thinking silently, the noisy discussion brought him back to his thoughts. Captain, please give the order. That's right. With a strong man like you in charge, we might as well do something big. Looking at the booing crew members around him, Carlos frowned slightly. Same course, Wanokuni. But, that is the territory of Kaido, the king of beasts. Could it be? Captain Garros wants to challenge the beasts pirates. Isn't this? Dot not good. Everyone also understands the reputation of Kaido, the emperor of the sea. Even the once popular thriller bark pirates were no match for them. These people are just there to deliver. Yes, Captain, we should go and seize the territory now. With your strength, pluses, treasures, women, etc. are not already at your fingertips. Why bother with Kaido? Carlos sneered, looked at everyone quietly and said. I don't want to do it again. Oh, okay. Seeing Carlos getting angry, everyone quickly shrank their necks. Although I wanted to say something more, I had no choice but to agree. Cake Island. It's tea time now. Mom. Eat me. Eat me. Enjoy me. The Emperor of the Sea, Charlotte Linlin, is enjoying the various desserts presented by the ministers. Under the influence of Soul Soul Fruit. The mochi dumplings, anko cream cake, teacups, knives and forks in front of me all have souls, and they are all talking about it. The eldest son, Perospero, hesitated again and again, but slowly walked forward and handed a newspaper with both hands. Even though they are related by blood. But disturbing my mother at this time is still a very dangerous thing. The consequences of offending the sea emperor could range from being deprived of a few years of life to even losing his life. But the news in this newspaper was so important that he couldn't care about it anymore. Mom, the latest information. Well, Charlotte Linlin sucked the cream on her fingers and took the newspaper dissatisfied. After a few cursory glances, his face instantly turned gloomy. Dafu was killed. Garros. Where did this young boy come from? He's so courageous. How dare he offend our BIGMOM pirates? How is Dafu doing now? Perospero shook his head and asked in a deep voice. It's not optimistic. Our people were already seriously injured when they found him. Although he was rescued from Marine's hands in time, and after treatment, he was out of danger. But his hands were also disabled, and I'm afraid he will never be able to fight again. Quote. What? The ant was shocked and angry. The huge, bloated, hill-like body shook and suddenly stood up from his seat. The surrounding atmosphere was solemn and depressing, making people breathless. The power of the soul fruit breaks out quietly inadvertently. Mom. No. Ah. Amid waves of frightened and desperate cries. Auntie's body is like a black hole, frantically sucking out the souls around her. Cups, tables, chairs, cakes. Countless homies' creations fell down one after another and lost their breath. A radius of one kilometer seemed to turn into a dead zone. The surrounding ministers were trembling all over and lowered their heads in a hurry, not daring to look directly. The Queen of Soul kicked the desk in front of her and squeezed out cold words from between her teeth. Call the dessert army. I want to make this guy understand the consequences of provoking the BIGMOM pirates. Just then, down the steps. The 35th son of the Charlotte family, Juice Minister Smoothie, walked slowly with long legs and half knelt on the ground. Mom, please stay calm. 
the newbie with a bounty of 500 million belly is not worthy of your anger. According to the intelligence personnel of the Fishmen Island, that guy is currently hanging out with the blood sail pirates. He just left the Fishmen Island today. Preliminary judgment shows that their destination is likely to be Wanokuni. I heard that this guy is also a swordsman. Let me deal with it down here. The ant nodded slightly, with a twinkle in her eye. To be able to tie with that guy in Bista, this kid is not a simple guy. Smooge. You and Snag will take ten battleships to find him. Break his limbs and bring him back. Yes. Mom. The messenger bird of the World News Service flies to various parts of the world carrying newspapers one after another. But in just a few days. What happened at the Sabayati archipelago went viral quickly. People all over the world are talking about the names Garros and Rayleigh in streets, pubs, docks, everywhere. Moby Dick. Dad. The latest news. Marco grabbed the newspaper and came to a huge throne. Sitting there was a tall, muscular man over six meters tall, shirtless, and his crescent-shaped white beard also indicated his identity. Captain of the Whitebeard Pirates, Edward Newgate is known as the strongest man in the world. He closed his eyes and peacefully enjoyed the massage from the nurse in the leopard print skirt. But that burly and strong body began to be hung with bottles and IV drips. Compared with his previous peak years, he is now in his 60s and looks a little more twilight. Having said that, there was still a faint sense of oppression coming from this man that made people feel palpitating. Whitebeard slowly opened his eyes and reached out to take the newspaper, with a look of surprise in his eyes. Rayleigh, after so many years of silence, is he no longer willing to be lonely. And this newcomer named Garros can actually compete with Bista. Gu la la la. There are so many talented people in this sea. I'm afraid it will be these young people who rule the world from now on. My own situation couldn't be clearer. No matter how invincible you are, you can't resist the passage of time. After some emotion, Whitebeard came back to his senses and asked, Is the Bistana boy okay? Did you escape successfully? Marco nodded and said, Just got in touch with him. Marine sent out Marine Admiral Kazaru, Ghost Spider, and more than 5,000 Marine soldiers. But thanks to Rayleigh, they managed to break through Marine's encirclement after a fierce battle. As he was talking, he suddenly remembered something. By the way, Bista also asked me to tell you, Dad. Garros is very strong. Although we only fought against him briefly, this guy's strength is not inferior to him at all. We can send someone to invite him on board, or even. If possible, he can also fill the vacant position of captain of the second division. As soon as he said this, Whitebeard raised his eyebrows and his expression became serious. Oh. You actually have such a high evaluation. Not only him, but other people on the deck also cast surprised glances. The captain of the third division, Diamond, Josie, crossed his arms and looked a little unconvinced, and said in a loud voice. He's just a newcomer in the first half of the Grand Line. He's not qualified to be the captain of the second division of the Whitebeard Pirates. Marco shook his head and raised the newspaper in his hand. Although this guy is just a newcomer in his 20s and not famous, he offered a reward of 500 million for the first time, and Rayleigh is also willing to teach him personally. Everyone on the deck looked at each other, speechless for a moment. Teach, who was sitting aside and silently eating soccer a peach pie, seemed to be interested. Oh, is this guy really that strong? Did he agree? Marco shook his head and said amusedly and angrily. That's not true. This kid directly rejected Rayleigh, snatched a big sharp knife, and ran away with a large amount of auction items. In fact, if it hadn't been for his reminder, Marine might not have been able to react, and Bista wouldn't have been so dangerous this time. Gu la la la. Whitebeard picked up the wine bag next to him and took a big gulp. Being brave, resourceful, and courageous is a bit interesting. Since Bista is so confident in the kid, okay. When he comes to New World, we can get in touch with him. I don't know if this kid has what it takes to take over the position of captain of the second division. East Blue, Windmill Village Pier. Amid the reluctant cries of the villagers, the Redbirds drifted away. My left arm was bitten off by a mere sea kings. Boss, you are too inferior. Ha ha. Did the captain secretly eat the devil fruit without telling us and become weak in the sea? Idiot, demon fruit power should sink. 
But then again, I'm afraid I'm going to get beaten up by that guy Hawkeye next time. On the deck, there were Lakalu, Usopp, Deeg and other crew members making noises. They were expressing their concerns in a joking way. Ben Beckman was holding a cigar in his mouth, leaning on the railing of the ship with his arms folded, and said calmly. That's just the devil fruit. For that kid, you didn't hesitate to lose an arm, and you also gave away the straw hat that means a lot to you. Is all this really worth it? Shanks stood on the bow of the ship, his right hand resting on the griffin at his waist. The refreshing sea breeze blew in his face, making his cape rustle behind him. He looked into the distance, as if he saw the future. Now that I've done it, I have no regrets. Things here are over. It's time to go to the new world. Oh, who are you going to deal with? Kaido, Big Mom, or Whitebeard? Shanks smiled lightly and said. It's not that you don't know, I have never had the idea of dominating the world. Appreciate the scenery you have never seen before, taste the food you have never eaten before, enjoy one adventure after another, and become the freest person on this sea. Beckman blew out a thick circle of smoke. From the smoke, cold words came. You have seen what happened this time. Anyway, gaining a little fame will save us a lot of trouble in the future and save us from being harassed by unscrupulous characters like bandits. Shanks nodded. You were right, then let New World have another sea emperor. At this time, Yusuf's shout came from the deck, interrupting the conversation between the two. Newspaper. I've been away from the Grand Line for so long, and I don't know what big things happened. Shanks took the newspaper with one hand and said with some surprise. Garros. Has another great swordsman appeared. That's good. With this guy here, Hawkeye probably won't come to me again. That being said, losing his left arm is not necessarily a bad thing. You guy. Beckman shook his head and took the newspaper from the other party's hand. Having a bounty of 500 million belly for his first debut, this guy seems to be extraordinary. Shanks, since he appeared in Sabayati Archipelago, he might go to the New World next. If you meet him in the future, you might as well get in touch. He might become our companion. Marine Headquarters Marineford. The atmosphere in the marshal's office was extremely solemn. So many people were dispatched, and they actually allowed the other party to escape. Looking at the bandaged ghost spider, Akainu frowned deeply. Ghost spider's old face twitched twice but didn't say anything. On the sofa nearby, Kazaru was cutting his nails leisurely. Who would have known that Pluton Rayleigh was also present at the time? This guy is the legendary big pirate and the deputy of the pirate king. He has been caught for so many years but has not been able to catch him. It is enough to successfully repel the opponent this time. Besides, this time Marine also caught a dozen pirates with a bounty of tens of millions on the spot, which is considered a great achievement. He looked at the other party unhurriedly, as if it had nothing to do with him. Akainu clenched his fists hard, and there was an unknown fire in his heart. Among the three Marine admirals, Aokiji often doesn't see people and he doesn't catch many pirates, so he usually hangs out. Kazaru is responsible for guarding the celestial dragons and has nothing to do all day long. He either stays in the office drinking tea or reading the newspaper to kill time. This time I finally went on a mission, but it was handled perfunctorily. Thinking of this, his tone became cold. As an admiral, is it worth bragging about catching a few pirates who have lost the ability to resist? With your ability, it shouldn't be difficult to deal with a remnant of the old era, right? No matter what, you shouldn't lose track of that guy. Okay. Sakazuki. Sengoku scolded in a deep voice. It has become a fact that Rayleigh was let go, and it will be useless to pursue it any further. After this battle, Rayleigh must have restrained himself a lot and will no longer appear randomly. It's just this guy named Garros who deserves our focus. Ghost Spider who had been silent all this time, suddenly said. It was most likely him who sent a distress message to Marine at that time. Garp, who was sitting cross-legged next to him, shook his head and said. You mean Garros? How is that possible? Why would you go out of your way to notify Marine if you're going to rob the auction? It won't do him any good at all. Marine Chief of Staff he suddenly spoke. It's not impossible. Everyone looked over in confusion, waiting for her explanation. Maybe his purpose is not the auction items, but to deliberately attract our marine's attention. 
As for why he did this, it's either because he was young and energetic and wanted to show off his skills in front of Marine, or he had a grudge against the pirates present and specially informed as to clean up the mess. Akainu's face darkened and he couldn't help but sneer. HMPH, first don't take Marine seriously at all. He glanced at him and continued. Besides, don't you think there's something wrong with Garros' bounty? Everyone nodded slightly. Crocodile, Da Flamingo, Moonlight, Moria, Pirate Empress, Boa Hancock. Over the years, many troublesome people have appeared in the sea, which can be regarded as Marine's biggest concern. But in comparison, in front of Garrett's exaggerated reward, they were nothing at all. From the intelligence point of view, this man's strength is indeed good, but he is just a newly minted pirate, and his dangers are not even comparable to those pirates with tens of millions in rewards. It is very strange that the world government has issued a bounty of 500 million belly for just such a person. Is there any secret hidden in this guy? Everyone in the marshal's office suddenly fell into silence. Akainu suddenly stood up, swung the, justice, cloak behind his back, and strode towards the door. Sakazuki. Where are you going? New world. Could it be that you want to? Facing Sengoku's inquiry, Akainu walked straight out of the door without looking back, leaving only a few cold words behind. No matter what the purpose of this guy is, what secrets he hides. I only know one thing, it is Marine's duty to catch pirates, and it is also my justice. I will find this guy and impel him myself. More than a week has passed since the blood sail pirates arrived in the new world. Sailing journeys are mostly boring. What we face every day is either the endless waves on the sea or the seagulls hovering in the sky. In the past few days, their ship has not encountered any pirates. Not even a shadow of a ship was seen. However, everyone is considered to be a senior pirate, and they all have their own ways of passing the boring time. Some people were sitting on the deck swinging fishing rods and fishing. There are also those who have nothing to do and gather in the room to gamble. Carlos closed his eyes, crossed his legs, and lay leisurely on the beach chair. On his left and right sides, half kneeling, were two female pirates with fair skin and hot bodies. While gently squeezing his shoulders with his little hands, he brought the cut fruit snacks to his mouth from time to time. Carlos was enjoying it in peace. The sound of waves could be heard in his ears, and the refreshing sea breeze kept blowing, and he gradually fell into sleep. As the captain of the blood sail pirates, how about enjoying yourself? In the cabin not far away, Yorick and several other cadres were gathering together, whispering something. Hey, Yorick, are we really going to Wanokuni? The first officer quietly glanced at Carlos on the deck through the transparent window. He lowered his voice and said. I can't help it. I've tried to persuade him more than once during this time, but this guy is determined to join the beast's pirates. Everyone frowned. Join the beast's pirates. I really don't understand. How can you be as happy as being someone else's younger brother than being the boss yourself? This guy has such a high bounty, they will definitely welcome it, but the question is, what about us? In the blood sail pirates, they were still cadres, leading hundreds of people, but in the beast's pirates, they were probably not even one. Oh, just take it one step at a time. If it doesn't work. While they were discussing, the pirate responsible for monitoring the sea surface in the observation room above the mast shouted loudly. There's a situation. Pirate ships were discovered right in front of the fleet, and the number was staggering. Everyone looked at each other, stood up immediately, and hurried to the deck. Many people have gathered here, holding telescopes and shouting something. Yorick's face was gloomy, and he pushed aside the crowd and came to the side of the ship. What's the situation? Before anyone else could speak, he snatched the telescope from the person next to him and looked into the distance. In the direction they were heading, it was located more than 10 nautical miles away. Ten three-masted sailing ships with pirate flags suddenly appeared. They formed a row and blocked the sea area ahead. Seeing this posture, Yorick's expression became serious. As expected of New World, did you encounter the pirates so quickly? Suddenly someone shouted. That flag is the B-I-G-M-O-M pirates. No way. Did you see it wrong? Everyone was shocked. More and more pirates put down what they were doing and came to the deck. Looking at them, it seems they have been waiting here for a long time. No, they found us. They are heading in our direction. So fast. 
Why is this happening? Is it because? Everyone on the deck couldn't help but look at Carlos. They have not forgotten that this man defeated Charlotte Daifuku of the BIGMOM Pirates a few days ago. He seemed disturbed by the noise. Carlos stretched, stood up slowly, and came to the deck to look into the distance. Oh. Are there any enemies? Captain, the BIGMOM Pirates must have gotten information about you and came here to take revenge. Is this too fast? The opponent's strength is twice that of ours. This is bad. Captain, change course. It's not too late to escape now. When preparing to go to the new world, everyone has already done enough homework. I also know the several sea emperors who reign in the new world. Naturally, they are no strangers to the power of the BIGMOM pirates. Why panic? Vice Captain Yorick shouted, don't forget, what a character our captain is. Although I was a little worried, I didn't overreact. Facing the strength of the captain's great swordsman, there are only ten battleships. However, another cadre's exclamation completely dispelled his illusions. If I'm not mistaken, then, that guy is. Snug it from the four dessert stars. And smoothie. What? Two generals were dispatched at once. Impossible, right? The person next to him quickly took out a thick stack of reward orders from the room and started flipping through them quickly. The next moment, his face turned extremely ugly. Snag, one of the four sweet generals of the BIGMOM pirates, has a bounty of 600 million belly. Smoothie, one of the four dessert generals of the BIGMOM pirates, has a bounty of 932 million baileys. It's them, absolutely. Because of fear, even his voice began to tremble. He was not the only one. When the pirates on the deck saw clearly the appearance of the two people on the other side's ship, they also felt unspeakable bitterness and despair in their hearts. It's over, it's completely over. There are only four members of the Bloodsail Pirates with tens of millions of belly, and Deputy Captain Yorick can only reach 100 million belly. Even the most powerful Captain Garros, who joined recently, only has 500 million belly. How could they be the opponents of these two generals? Not only is it at an absolute disadvantage in terms of military strength, but its high-end combat power is also completely crushed by the opponent. Yorick came to Carlos with a serious face and said in a deep voice. Captain Garros, the situation is urgent and the enemy's strength cannot be underestimated. Change the route immediately. After waiting for a long time, I didn't get a reply. It was difficult for Yorick to express the anxiety in his heart to others. He gritted his teeth and prepared to issue an order directly. Run. What are you running for? Carlos didn't seem to take the battle in front of him to heart, and said calmly. Give me my order and face the enemy head on. Based on the memory before time travel. He knows that the cadre structure of beasts pirates is divided from top to bottom. The governor, the three disasters, the flying six cells, the real beater, the one who numbers, the one who gives, the one who laughs, the one who waits. Since you want to be an undercover agent, it is best to become a three disaster level cadre, so that you can also have access to the core secrets of Beast's Pirates. The dessert star of BIGMOM Pirates corresponds to the three disasters. Carlos also wanted to feel the strength of an opponent of this caliber. After spending so many days in boredom, it was time to have some fun. Even if he couldn't defeat him, he could rely on skills such as going behind enemy lines and moonwalk to escape from the battlefield. Just as the two of them were talking, the one word long snake formation that the opponent originally maintained began to change. Ten pirate ships formed a semicircle and quickly surrounded them. It can be observed without a telescope. The distance between the two sides is shortening at a speed visible to the naked eye. Yorick felt cold all over. The current situation couldn't be more obvious. Even if you run away now, you can't get rid of the opponent. The only thing that can be done now is to take the lead in launching an artillery attack now. He gritted his teeth, held the communicator, and shouted at the top of his lungs. Everyone stop moving. Stop moving. The fleet fans out. Prepare to fire and sink them. Hurry up. Hurry up. But it took only a short time. The five warships stopped in place and began to turn around. Aiming the cannon muzzles of the numerous black holes on the ship into the distance. Cannons were also pushed onto the deck one by one by the pirate minions. Seeing this scene, Yorick seemed to regain some confidence. 
the cannons of our blood sail pirates are all purchased from the black market at great cost. Both their range and power are astonishing. These gunners are all elite, and shooting at this distance is easy for them. Want to surround us and annihilate us. Be prepared to sink into the sea first, B-I-G-M-O-M pirates. Fire. Give an order. 200 cannons fired at each other at the same time. The five pirate ships suddenly burst into dazzling fire. The powerful recoil even caused the hull to tilt slightly. Accompanied by a deafening loud noise. Countless dark cannonballs drew a beautiful parabola in the air, hitting each other from an extremely long distance. Boom boom boom. Violent explosions sounded one after another. Although a large number of cannonballs were scattered on the sea, causing countless splashes. But under this salvo, an enemy warship immediately turned into countless fragments in the explosion. The opponent is worthy of being called the BIGMOM pirates. After a brief period of confusion, a counterattack was launched immediately. Homit's shells endowed with souls were launched into the air. These artillery shells have autonomous consciousness and can automatically lock on and track targets. Even though the battleships of the BIGMOM pirates are still sailing at high speed. However, these shells were fired at an astonishing speed and accurately intercepted the second wave of incoming shells. Boo hoo hoo. Boom boom. Boom boom. The air was filled with gunpowder smoke and flames shot into the sky. In less than a moment. The blood sail pirates, who were the first to launch an artillery attack, not only failed to defeat the opponent in one fell swoop, but were suppressed by the opponent's counterattack. If several cadres on the ship hadn't jumped into the air in time to intercept, they would have suffered heavy losses. If this situation continues, there may be no need to wait for the opponent to encircle them. These shellings alone can completely sink their five ships. Are you kidding? You can still have such exaggerated accuracy at such a fast sailing speed. Are these people all monsters? This is the strength of the BIGMOM pirates. Such a huge gap between the two sides made it difficult for the gunners to accept it for a while. He couldn't help but stop what he was doing and stood there dumbfounded. Carlos sighed secretly, just as he was considering whether to use Moonwalk and fly over to kill the opponent directly. The other side suddenly stopped the continuous bombardment. The leading enemy ship broke away from the fleet and was heading here at a very fast speed. 500 meters. 200 meters. 100 meters. The distance between the two sides continued to shorten, and they could even clearly see the situation on the other side's deck. At the bow of the ship, stood a tall man covered in armor. On the deck behind him, the pirates showed cruel smiles, holding firecrackers one by one and pulling the triggers. Bang bang bang. Countless hot bullets came like raindrops. With just one round of shooting, the ship's wall was riddled with holes and sawdust flew everywhere. Are you here? So fast. Can we only be suppressed and beaten? What else? The man leading the opponent is Snag. This guy is a big pirate with a bounty of 600 million belly. In the face of the powerful firepower, everyone was beaten so hard that they could not lift their heads and could only hide behind obstacles and tremble. Looking at the enemy ships getting closer and closer, several cadres couldn't help but swallow hard. The shadow of a famous tree and the captain with a bounty of 500 million belly are so terrifying. What's more, Snag has a reward of 600 million. They really don't have the courage to go out and fight. On the entire deck, only Carlos was still standing proudly at the bow of the ship. Unknowingly, his right hand was placed on the scabbard at his waist, and an imperceptible fighting spirit flashed deep in his eyes. Lord Snag, why did you order the bombardment to stop? The subordinate next to him asked in confusion. Mom's order is to capture that guy alive. I heard he has zone ability. If the ship is blown up, we will have to waste time going to the bottom of the sea to salvage him. That's it, just rush over and start hand-to-hand -hand combat. The men beside him said seriously. Lord Snag, according to the intelligence, this man named Garros is very powerful. Please be careful. Humph, just what I want. Snag nodded slightly. To be able to defeat Daifuku and have a tie with Bista, the opponent's strength is indeed good. He did not underestimate the other party at all. A lion still has to use all his strength to fight a rabbit, let alone facing such a strong person. Among the four dessert stars, Snag ranked last. Strength, bounty, prestige, inferior to others in every aspect. 
Although engaging in side-to-side -side combat involves some risks, it is also a great opportunity to build merit and prove oneself. Even if they were not hostile, there would still be Smoothie and so many of his men nearby. Thinking of this, Snag could no longer hold back, and a flash of fanaticism flashed in his eyes. Swish. He suddenly drew out the long knife that was as tall as a person behind him, jumped up high, and slashed it down towards this side with the force of a mountain crushing him. Well done. Carlos' eyes narrowed and he exerted force on his feet. At this moment, the infinite energy contained in the body was released like a volcano erupting. Boom. A loud noise rang in my ears. Everyone's eyes were dazzled. I saw the hard deck beneath Carlos' feet cracking layer by layer, and countless wood chips flying everywhere. Even the entire huge main ship could not withstand such a powerful force and began to tilt seriously, almost turning over. Under this huge reaction force, Carlos shot into the air like a cannonball. Chang. In midair, the hidden thunder was unsheathed. Under the entanglement of armament hockey, the whole body is as black as ink, and it exudes waves of terrifying power that is breathtaking. Just looking at it makes people feel a sting in their eyes. This knife, with a piercing scream, has the momentum to chop everything. Strike hard towards the front. Snag's expression changed drastically. Before he could react, he felt an incomparable and powerful force pressing down on him. Tide-like pain instantly tore his consciousness apart. This knife, almost cut him in half. Snag's vision went dark, he lost all his breath, and fell heavily to the deck of the pirate ship below, making a huge hole. What just happened? For example, if I read correctly, Captain Garros killed the opponent with one blow. Looking at Carlos back on the deck. The minions and officers of the Blood Sail Pirates rubbed their eyes vigorously, each of them looking like they couldn't believe it. Did Snag, who had a bounty of 600 million on his head, be killed by their captain? If they hadn't seen it with their own eyes, they would never believe such an outrageous thing. After a brief moment of dead silence, warm cheers erupted on the deck, and the sound reached into the sky. Vice Captain Yorick opened his mouth wide, and the shock in his heart was hard to describe. As a swordsman himself, he could clearly feel the power contained in Carlos's strike just now. Is this, is this a strength comparable to that of a great swordsman? So, is this his true strength? He's too strong. In contrast, the BIGMOM pirates fell into a gloomy atmosphere. Lord Smoothie, S. Snuggler, he. He died. After hearing the report from his subordinates, Smoothie froze and said glumly. You reckless idiot. Although she said that, how could she have imagined that the other party actually killed Snag with just one move? To be fair, even she couldn't do such a thing. Unless, use that. Such an amazing armament hockey, even Katakori Ni is probably no more than this, or even not much worse than my mother. Garros. I really underestimate you. Looking at the figure on the other side, she narrowed her eyes slightly, her eyes full of fear. Lord Smoothie, what should we do now? How about asking for support? Smoothie was about to take out the phone bug in his arms when he suddenly thought of it. The other party is just a newcomer who has just set foot in the new world. They dispatched two generals this time, and they completely overwhelmed the opponent in terms of military strength. It still can't be solved under such an advantage, so we have to ask for so-called reinforcements. This kind of thing was really hard for her to accept. If this kind of scandal accidentally spreads, it will undoubtedly cause a huge blow to the reputation of the BIGMOM pirates. Thinking of this, Smoothie took a deep breath and took out a delicate transparent glass. Amid the surprised glances, he reached out and grabbed the person next to him. Sir. Ah. Spare my life. He ignored the other party's cries for mercy. Smoothie used both hands to twist the opponent into a twisted shape, like twisting a rag. Drops of unknown liquid fell into the glass. 5. 10. Smoothie picked up the glass filled with the unknown liquid and drank it all in one gulp. Juice giant. The next moment, the aura throughout his body began to surge, and his body and weapons became larger and larger. Such an abnormal situation immediately attracted the attention of everyone in the Blood Sail Pirates. Vice Captain Yorick's face turned pale and he murmured. Those with Paramesha fruit squeezing ability can drain the water from other people's bodies and use it to strengthen themselves. They can also use it to launch devastating attacks. What a scary guy like a monster. 
Under the influence of the fruit's ability, Smoothie, who was originally more than four meters tall, became as tall as a giant together with his weapons. Even though they were more than 200 meters away, they could still feel the strong sense of oppression emanating from the other party's body. Smoothie held the giant sword in both hands and squatted down slightly, assuming a sword-wielding posture. Carlos touched his chin and stared into the distance silently. The aura alone is so amazing. If you really make this attack, I'm afraid the blood sail pirates will be destroyed as a result. He also wanted to take this pirate ship to Wanokuni, so naturally he couldn't just sit back and watch this happen. Judging from the aura, the strength of the giant smoothie at this time is not inferior to Carlos at all, and is even more powerful. If they fight, the two will not be able to end the fight for a while. Under the siege of the opponent, these men of the blood sail pirates will be defeated as expected. For Carlos, they still have a use, so naturally they can't just sit back and watch this happen. Maybe it's because he has been an agent for so many years. Instead of fighting the enemy head on, he prefers to solve them in simple and efficient ways. As demon fruit power, you actually chose to fight me on the sea. I have to say, this is a stupid decision. Carlos shook his head slightly and made a series of strange gestures with his hands. Water style katakana middle dot shark bomb technique. The words just fell. The sea surface in the distance suddenly bulged high, as if there was an invisible big hand stirring the bottom of the sea. In the horrified eyes of everyone, a giant shark 20 to 30 meters long soared into the sky from the sea. Boom. Under the huge impact, the main ship where Smoothie was was hit in half. Countless pirates were thrown into the air and swallowed one by one by the giant shark. Exclamations and screams could be heard endlessly. Smoothie, who was in the state of accumulating power, was unable to dodge for a moment, and was knocked out and fell straight into the sea. Oops. Her face changed drastically, and she tried hard to adjust her body shape, but there was a feeling of weakness all over her body. After some struggle, it still sank to the bottom of the sea. The sea was rolling violently and the waves were rough. In less than a minute, the giant shark effortlessly destroyed all the enemy ships. Looking at the countless wreckage floating on the sea, everyone lay on the railing and looked at each other, as if they had not yet reacted. It's been a long time. Yorick turned his stiff neck and couldn't help but said. Is it that easy to kill? What is this shark? Is it the power of devil fruit? Isn't Captain Garros a person with zone ability? He can actually control the sea. This. Although everyone didn't know what happened, they didn't dare to step forward and ask directly. He just looked at Carlos with more awe. Why are you still standing here? Deal with it and don't let anyone live. Yes. A series of bubbles suddenly appeared on the sea surface where countless wreckage was floating. A woman emerged from the water. She shook her long red ponytail hair and quickly took out the phone bug in her arms. Mom. I'm Snammon. We encountered the Bloodsail Pirates. Snader was killed, Sister Smoothie was defeated, and the fleet was completely destroyed. They are heading in the direction of Wanokuni. Katakori. Call all the desert armies. I will attack them myself. Cake Island erupted with an earth-shattering roar. In a terrifying and depressing atmosphere. All the creatures on the island looked to the sky in fear. A tall, fat man wearing a pirate hat and a pink dress appeared in the sky. Above her head is a ball of flame, Prometheus, as dazzling as the sun. The giant serrated blade, Napoleon, is on his shoulders, and the thundercloud, Zeus, is on his feet. Cutting through the sky, flying towards the port. Wanokuni, Ghost Island, the dark prison room. You fool. You are the son of Lousy, and you will become the daimyo of Wanokuni and rule this country in the future. I don't allow you to call yourself Odin anymore. No. I want to be a man like Odin. You just stole Wanokuni, you're a despicable person. Eighteen-year-old Yamato shook the shackles in his hands dissatisfied and retorted firmly. Kaido's vision went dark and he almost fainted. Da da da. There were rapid footsteps beside him. Jin walked over quickly and whispered. Boss Kaido, according to the reports of his subordinates, the Big Mom pirates gathered more than 50 warships and headed in the direction of Wanokuni. My subordinates suspect that their target is us. Kaido frowned deeply. Such a big move. What does that guy Linlin -lin want to do? Why is he so crazy? Ten years ago, he defeated the Kazuki clan and seized the Wanokuni territory. 
Relying on its unique geographical advantages and abundant seastone mineral resources, Beast's Pirates continues to grow and develop. Could it be that Lin Lin also covets this territory? Countless thoughts came to mind, but Kaido wasn't worried at all. Although the BIGMOM pirates are their competitors, Charlotte Linlin is also his former companion. The friendship between the two is pretty good. If it hadn't been for her, he wouldn't have gotten the zone phantom beast species, fish fruit, and blue dragon form. Besides, Wanokuni is a very special country. It has no coast and is surrounded only by cliffs and waterfalls. It can only be accessed through a special passage, which is firmly guarded by beasts pirates. Unique geographical advantages, an extremely large army under his command, and the power of Kurozumi. Even if Marine takes action, there is nothing he can do. Compared with this, there is another thing that makes Kaido more worthy of attention. Just strengthen the patrol manpower in the surrounding areas, and don't pay too much attention to the BIGMOM pirates. How is the talent selection going? Jin lowered his head and replied. Two new pirate groups have recently joined. Their captains are Fuzifu and Sasaki. By the way, there is also a young man named Jack. Although he is only 18 years old, his strength is very good. He is a user with the ability of the ancient zone species, the elephant fruit, and the mammoth form. Let them prepare well and Lousy will inspect it personally in two days. Hearing this, Kaido's irritable mood suddenly became extremely comfortable. Judging from Jin's perspective, these people must not be ordinary people. Kaido picked up the wine bottle on his waist and took a sip of wine, laughing as he walked out of the cell. Bloodsail Pirates, Training Room. Carlos was shirtless and silently sitting cross-legged on the floor. Sweat was constantly flowing on the body like cast steel, which had already wet the surrounding ground. Around him, dumbbells, stone locks and other training equipment weighing several tons were placed messily. Physical fitness, hockey and other abilities can slowly become stronger through exercise. The power of a skill is determined by the amount of physical energy consumed. Although he is burdened with the system, he still takes half a day to exercise every day. I don't know how much time has passed. Carlos, who had fallen asleep, suddenly opened his eyes. The fierce and domineering gaze was as substantial as lightning flashing across the room in the dark night. Since entering the new world. In addition to his daily exercise routine, he also uses his spare time to baptize this famous sword with armament hockey. Under the system reward before, his swordsmanship level had long been like a layer of window paper that was about to be broken, and he was about to complete a breakthrough. After experiencing battles with Dafu, Bista, Snag and others, Carlos gained many insights and insights into the art of swordsmanship. Through these days of exercise and meditation. At this point, his swordsmanship has been completely upgraded from Grandmaster level to penultimate level. He could gradually begin to understand Beast's superb and dazzling sword skills during the auction in Sabayati. According to Carlos's estimation, he should have reached the level of a great swordsman now. The great swordsman. Carlos murmured, and a name couldn't help but appear in his mind. Hawkeye. Dracul Mahawk. If divided according to the system, the world's greatest swordsman's swordsmanship is estimated to have reached the ultimate level. Entry, proficiency, mastery, grand master, excellence, ultimate. I want to reach the ultimate state, but I don't know how many years of hard training I have to do, and I don't know how many strong men I have to fight to the death. Carlos sighed slightly, then adjusted his mood. Although there is no way to compare with this strong man who stands at the top, his swordsmanship is at the level of a great swordsman, coupled with armament hockey at the penultimate level. According to his estimation, his current strength should have reached the level of the emperor's deputy. Looking at the entire One Piece world, he is also an extremely strong person. But Carlos also knew that the so-called deputy of the emperor was not good enough in front of the emperor of the sea. You still have to be careful when you get to Wanokuni. Today, let's practice for another five hours. Although it has been a long time since the BIGMOM pirates attacked. But everyone in the Blood Sail Pirates still recalled the dangerous scene that day from time to time. Inside the cabin, Yorick drank in silence. The flickering candlelight reflected the ferocious faces. I said, are you sure you read that correctly? This is the fifth time you've asked. I am also a lookout on the ship after all. I swear, I was definitely not wrong at the time. 
there is indeed a red-haired woman talking to the phone bug. No need to think about it, she must be tipping off the headquarters of the BIGMOM pirates. It's troublesome. Everyone looked at each other and couldn't help but smile bitterly. When I first became a pirate, I just wanted to make money. How could you imagine that it would be related to the Emperor of the Sea? This guy shouldn't have been allowed on the ship in the first place. It's better now. He has offended the BIGMOM pirates. That's also forced by the situation. The matter has reached this point. What's the use of saying these depressing words? It's better to think about what to do now. The navigator waved his hand indifferently. There should be no problem. At the current pace, we are about to reach the beast's pirate's sphere of influence. We will arrive at Wanokuni in about two days. Everyone immediately breathed a sigh of relief and looked better. Then the question is, should we join with Garros, or... First Officer Yorick slammed his glass on the table. Haven't you felt the horror of the new world? This is simply no place for us to stay. After finishing this job, we should find a way to return to the first half of the Grand Line. That is our paradise. Okay, don't let that guy know about this. After all, he is still our captain in name. There's a situation. Pirate ships discovered. Oh my god, there are so many. The sudden shouting on the deck immediately startled everyone, including Carlos. He stopped what he was doing during training and walked quickly to the deck. The railings on the ship's side were already crowded with people, all holding telescopes and looking into the distance. On the distant sea, countless battleships flying the flag of the BIGMOM pirates appeared. They formed a huge row and were still driving towards this side. I don't know when they were completely surrounded. It's the BIGMOM pirates. This is a trap, no, we are completely surrounded. 53 ships in total. The opponent's strength is 10 times that of ours. Carlos' eyes darkened and he frowned. After defeating the fleet led by Smoothie, he specifically asked his men to clean up the battlefield in order to prevent any fish from slipping through the net. What he didn't expect was that the news leaked out. When his eyes fell on the deck of the opponent's fleet, everyone suddenly felt a chill all over their bodies, as if they had fallen into an ice cave. Then, that person is. The leader of the BIGMOM pirates, the Emperor of the Sea, Charlotte Linlin. It's over, we're done. Despair spread quickly. Many people felt weak and sat down on the deck, holding their heads in their hands and shivering. Carlos frowned at this look. Look at your weak looks and what you are saying. Cheer up. Yorick on the side pointed into the distance and sneered. Do you see who that is? The Emperor of the Sea, Charlotte Linlin with a bounty of over 4 billion. And the group of guys standing behind her, Katakori, Perospero, Owen, Petra. Do you still think we still have hope of escaping? Stop joking. By the way, if you really want to talk about it, the culprit of all this is you. You killed the cadres of the BIGMOM pirates, that's why they brought so many people here for revenge. Yorick became more and more excited as he talked, and in the end he even roared. On the deck, more and more people gathered towards this side. After hearing these words, they all cast resentful glances at Carlos. If not for this guy, they don't know how many small towns they have robbed, how many beautiful women they have toyed with, how many treasures they have stolen and are living happily somewhere. There is no way I would fall into this desperate situation. Carlos looked at everyone amusedly. It was quite refreshing when I accepted the 300 million baileys in tolls. What? Now you're complaining about everything. Several cadres pushed away the crowd and said one after another. Garros, if you really want to talk about it, the cause of this incident is all because of you. We can return those auction items to you, but accordingly, you must get off our ship immediately. That's right. For the sake of getting acquainted, don't get us involved. Let's take a boat and leave as soon as possible. If it's any later, it'll be too late. Several people suppressed their inner anxiety and kept persuading. If they hadn't seen the strength of the man in front of them, they would have tied him up and presented him to the BIGMOM pirates without saying a word. Having reached this point, Yorick simply smashed the jar and kept sneering. I made you the captain of the blood sail pirates in the first place just because you were better than Tucker. I hope you can make us rich. It's good for you. You offended the BIGMOM pirates and you still don't know how to restrain yourself. You still want to take action to kill Smoothie's fleet. 
We also advised you at the beginning, but you didn't listen and insisted on going against them. Now it's over. It's all over. Offend them to death. Carlos said nothing, but his eyes became colder and colder. The evil aura and murderous intent emanating from the whole body continued to spread towards the surroundings. Yorick was shocked and took a few steps back, then snorted coldly. Who are you trying to scare? Yes, you are indeed very strong. You can probably kill us within minutes. But so what? Lousy is not one to be scared. I don't know what you are so proud of. We won't survive anyway, so you can be buried with us. Well, 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 well. Auntie stepped on the thunder cloud Zeus and floated in midair. Looking at each other arguing in the distance, they laughed wildly. Kid, are you Garros? Are you very popular recently? The blood sale pirates seem to be nothing more than that, just a bunch of rabble. Over the years, there have been many people like you who have tried to challenge the authority of the sea emperor, but without exception, they all sank into the sea. Little devil, pay for my child with your life. Napoleon. The words just fell. The bicorn hat on his head showed a cruel smile. It turned into a serrated magic blade and flew into Auntie's hand. Wei Guo. A dazzling light suddenly erupted. A huge shock wave of sword energy swept towards the blood sail pirates in the distance. Even the space he'd passed through began to twist irregularly. The sea was split open. Are you kidding me? Is this the strength of the emperor of the sea? It is indeed as terrifying as the rumors. Everyone on the blood sail pirate ship froze in place, staring blankly at the roaring attacks. At this moment, there was only endless despair in their hearts, and many even began to curse viciously. Help. I don't want to die yet. It's all you, it's all your fault. Let's go to hell together, you fools. In the face of this terrifying slash that destroyed the world, Carlos ignored the ugly subordinates behind him. He quietly watched the devastating strike coming from ahead. Not only did he not show any fear, but he felt a strong fighting spirit ignited in his heart. As expected of Charlotte Linlin, she is truly tremblingly powerful. Unconsciously, he clenched the dark thunder in his hand tightly, raised the corners of his mouth slightly, and took a step forward. Accompanied by a loud shout, dark blue light suddenly bloomed from the blade, turning into an arc-shaped slash of nearly 100 meters, rising into the sky. Two giant slashes collided violently in midair. This moment. The world seemed to be stagnant. There was silence, a dead silence. Next moment. Rumble. A roar like muffled thunder exploded in everyone's ears. The aftermath of the collision of the slashes swept away in all directions. The calm sea suddenly became extremely violent. The strong wind carried huge waves, one after another. In the face of this power of heaven and earth, the pirate ships kept bumping up and down. The solid hull made a crunching sound, as if it was falling apart at any moment. The pirate minions of the Blood Sail Pirates and BIGMOM Pirates were all curled up, hugging the mast, or clinging to nearby objects. Otherwise, he will fall into the sea in the next second and die without a trace of his body. The cold seawater slapped on their faces, but everyone had no time to care. They just looked at the man's figure in horror. Gradually, the turbulent sea slowly calmed down. Vice Captain Yorick seemed to have lost his soul, staring blankly at the back of the man at the bow of the ship, his mind trembling violently. Blocked. He actually blocked it. This guy actually has the strength to rival the Emperor of the Sea. How is this possible? This is not Dafu, Smoothie or anyone else, but Charlotte Linlin, the Sea Emperor with a bounty of more than 4 billion. This guy looks like he's only in his 20s, but is he already so powerful? If we survive the catastrophe today, our future achievements may be inestimable. Maybe, there will be a new emperor added to this sea. The scene before his eyes left Yorick completely at a loss what to say. All that was left in my heart was indescribable shock and deep regret. Suddenly an idea came to his mind that was so bold that even he couldn't believe it. Maybe, this man can really survive this desperate situation. Survive. As soon as this idea came up, it was out of control. If only I hadn't said those words before. Yorick shuddered. A strong desire to survive spread crazily deep in his heart. He didn't care much anymore and hurriedly knelt on the deck and begged in a low voice. Captain Garros. Lord Garros. I was just farting. You don't remember the faults of villains. Don't take it to heart. Let us to a way out before the other party arrives. 
Other cadres who were still in shock also reacted one after another. There is no doubt that this man is their only lifeline at the moment. On the deck, everyone fell to their knees. It's just the BIGMOM pirates. There's nothing to be afraid of. We can join the fight too. That's right. Captain, please give the breakout order. Everyone listens to you. Listening to the pleading from behind, Carlos sneered in his heart. He didn't bother to look back, but instead cast his gaze into the distance. It seems that everyone in the BIGMOM pirate group cannot accept this result. This guy can actually block my mother's power. This, this. Although he is just a newcomer to the sea, he can have such an exaggerated bounty, which is enough to explain the problem. That's right, even Dafu, Snag, and Smoothie were no match for this man, and they were defeated one after another. This man's strength is unfathomable. It's useless. We have dispatched 53 warships, tens of thousands of desert troops, and so many cadres this time. No matter how hard he fights, there is no way he can survive. There are only a handful of people in this world who can rival my mother, so there is nothing to worry about. Every pirate ship erupted in noisy discussion. Although everyone said harsh words on their lips, fear was still inevitable in their eyes. What a strong armament hockey, what a terrifying swordsmanship, and such a character appears. Katakori frowned slightly. Beside him, a person who looked like an old witch came over and whispered in his ear. Brother, do you want to use my ability to launch a raid inside the enemy ship? A flash of red flashed in Katakori's eyes, and then he relaxed. No need, pudding. Mom has already taken action. Leave everything to her. If we act rashly, we will be affected. Just watch quietly. I have already seen the tragic future of the blood sail pirates. Midair. In front of so many subordinates, one attack failed to defeat the opponent. This made the ant's face instantly become extremely gloomy. The discussion below reached her ears vaguely, which made her feel unspeakably irritated and angry. This moment. The power of the soul soul fruit explodes in full force. Auntie's whole body suddenly exuded an inexplicable aura. Mysterious, creepy whispers kept coming. The sound gradually resounded throughout the sky from low to high. In this sea area, corpses of sea kings that are hundreds of meters high are constantly emerging from the sea. Even the friendly forces below were more or less affected at this moment. For a time, hundreds of pirates and countless homies' creations fell to the ground with inexplicable expressions of horror and lifelessness. Auntie's momentum is still rising, and waves of terrifying aura are spreading uncontrollably. Singing Light Sword. As soon as he finished speaking, the three major soul weapons moved in response. The serrated magic blade Napoleon in his hand, the red sun flame Prometheus above his head, and the black thunder cloud Zeus under his feet. Three monsters merged into one. A dazzling bright light burst out suddenly. The night is like day. Blazing flames and wild thunder burst out of the air with a sharp slash. This slash composed of flames and thunder was given life at this moment. The terrifying energy fluctuations even distorted the space. It's like the judgment of a god, with a coldness and arrogance that is indifferent to everything. Hit the sea hard. Boom boom boom. This terrifying beam of light with a diameter of a hundred meters fell towards the blood sail pirate's fleet. It sank into the depths of the sea without any effort, as if it penetrated the entire sea. Countless pirates didn't say a word as they were instantly torn apart in the dazzling light. Ships, seawater, everything within a radius of 500 meters was completely dissolved and disappeared from this world forever. After a brief silence, countless pirates raised their hands and waved their weapons continuously. The cheers of landslides and tsunamis erupted, and the sound soared into the sky. Under such a level of attack, it has been turned into ashes, right? I thought he was such a great person, but he turned out to be just an idiot who didn't even consider his own strength. This is the strength of the pirate emperor. This is the result of provoking the BIGMOM pirates. Wait. Something's wrong. Look. What is that in the sky? A few unsocial exclamations suddenly came from the crowd. In the steaming mist that filled the sky, a huge black shadow rose into the sky and soared into the sky. How is this possible? This guy actually avoided Big Mom's fatal blow. The tens of thousands of people present opened their mouths and looked at the sky in disbelief. The entire sea area fell into deathly silence. 
Nice fireworks, B-I-G-M-O-M pirates, see you again in the future. There were bursts of laughter high in the sky. The giant eagle vibrated its wings vigorously, and soon disappeared from everyone's sight. Ding. Host's forced blood sail pirates, has suffered a devastating blow. Checking. Testing completed. Because host's behavior attracted powerful forces to retaliate, the forces were completely destroyed. Final rating. S. Strength rating. B. The conditions for the reward for Urwuzai have been met. Overall rating. A. Rewards are being distributed. Congratulations to host for obtaining Conqueror's Hockey Grandmaster level. The strong wind kept howling around me. Carlos ignored the B-I-G-M-O-M pirates in the distance and flew towards Wanokuni with the permanent pointer in his hand. Recalling the power of the flashing lightsaber just now, I still felt a wave of heart palpitations. Charlotte Linlin deserves to be called the Emperor of the Sea. This guy has definitely reached the ultimate level in developing the ability of the soul fruit. Even if he had used all his strength, it would be difficult to withstand such a terrifying blow. Fortunately, he dodged the blow at the critical moment and summoned Waluo to fly into the air. Although Anti is far stronger than him. But at this speed, there is absolutely no chance of catching up. Speaking of which, the cadres under BIGMOM are basically Paramesha, who have all kinds of weird abilities. Plus an army of staggering size, and an endless supply of Hormi's creations. They do have the capital to look down on New World. Even Marine might not dare to start a war with them in the New World without permission. If there is a drawback, it is the extreme lack of air power. This also gave Carlos the confidence to escape. Judging from the current situation, he should be out of danger. Although the blood sail pirates under his command were completely destroyed, Carlos did not have any regrets. Although he also couldn't stand the celestial dragons and some of the behaviors within the world government. But in comparison, pirates are even less tolerated. The pirates did not engage in production, but burned, killed, looted, and did all kinds of bad things. It can be said to be the source of chaos in this world. Perhaps they initially went to sea for fame, wealth, status, for various reasons, and for various dreams, but most of them became out of control after tasting the sweetness of violence. It is undeniable that there are a very small number of pirates who still maintain their original aspirations, such as the Straw Hat Pirates. Rather than calling them pirates, it would be more appropriate to call them adventurers. The Blood Sail Pirates are obviously not among them. Originally, Carlos planned to use them as bargaining chips to improve his status in the Beast's Pirates. Thinking of this, he shook his head repeatedly. That's okay, just use the ant's hand to get rid of them and get the system reward. With his current level of strength as a great swordsman, it shouldn't be a problem to get a great spot. What only surprised him was. This time the reward turns out to be Conqueror's Hockey. Conqueror's Hockey is the rarest and most special existence among Conqueror's Hockey. This ability cannot be acquired through acquired training. This has been destined since birth, and it belongs to the qualifications of a king. In the new world, there are not many people who own Conquerors. Only the one who is above all overlords can truly be regarded as the king of the sea. The strength of conqueror's hockey is usually related to one's courage and will. It was not very strong at the beginning and could only frighten some weak enemies. However, as the user's body and mind grow, conquerors also continue to increase. For example, in the original plot, Luffy knocked down 50,000 miscellaneous fish in one look. That scene was so cool. For Carlos, it is an extremely efficient and labor-saving way to clear away the miscellaneous soldiers. If you practice it to a high level, it can even further affect reality. Speaking of which, we have to defeat those unique skills that only a handful of top experts can master, Conqueror's Entanglement. There was a flash of light in the depths of Carlos's calm eyes. Grandmaster level Conquerors must be just as strong as Luffy from the Fishmen Island chapter. Must learn Conqueror's Entanglement from Kaido. Thinking of this, Carlos speeded up a little bit more, wishing he could reach Wanokuni now. Two days later. Located near Wanokuni, on an island that looks like a giant horn of a ghost, this is the headquarters of Beast's Pirates, Onigashima. The square was crowded with people. Not far away was a tall stand with two seats on it. Governor of Beast's Pirates, Kaido chatted with the people around him. 
Behind him stood Jin and Quinn's two confidants. Next to him are the current generals of Wanokuni, Kurozumi, and a group of samurai subordinates. The short, bald man chuckled. Beasts Pirates has added three powerful leaders this time. Congratulations, Kaido. Listening to the compliments from the people around him, Kaido drank heavily and couldn't help but laugh loudly. He wiped the wine stain from his mouth and looked down. Samu, Fuzifu, it's such a pity. The position of this big sign belongs to Jack. Looking at this burly young man wearing a steel jaw guard, Kaido felt indescribable satisfaction, as if he had seen himself in his youth. Over the years, Beast's Pirates has grown in popularity. It also attracted countless strong people to join. After going through many selections, the three ancient zone ability users in the audience stood out from countless people who came here to become the cadres of Beast's Pirates. Then that's it, the assessment is over. After Kaido finished speaking, he was about to get up and leave. According to the intelligence from his subordinates, the BIGMOM pirates are indeed heading towards Wanokuni. Rivals and friends whom I haven't seen for years come to visit. No matter what his purpose was, he had to start preparing for it. At the very least, you can't lose to the opponent in terms of momentum. Huh. What is that? Everyone raised their heads and looked at the sky. A small black spot appeared in the sky thousands of meters away. It was really hard to spot if you didn't look carefully. As the black spot grew bigger and bigger, everyone gradually figured out what it was. Eagle. It seems to be coming towards us. The other party was extremely fast, covering a distance of several thousand meters in less than a moment. He transformed into a human form when he was still a few hundred meters away from the square. He stepped on the air and landed safely on the square. The square suddenly fell into a slight commotion. Kaido stretched out his hand and stopped Jin behind him who was about to make a move. He stood up from the huge seat and said in a deep voice. If Lousy is not mistaken, you are the Garros who made a big fuss in the Sabayati archipelago some time ago and was put on a bounty of 500 million belly. Everyone in the audience whispered, and all cast curious glances. Is he the guy who offered a reward of 500 million belly? I didn't expect him to be here. He doesn't seem to be hostile. He must have come to seek refuge with us, right? Nonsense, unless you are an idiot, who dares to come here alone to provoke us beasts pirates. Carlos slowly walked to the bottom of the stands. He raised his head and looked directly at the tall, imposing man sitting on the seat with two horns on his head and said, Yes, I am Garros. You must be Kaido, the governor of beasts pirates, right? I've been admiring you for a long time, and I came here specifically to join the beasts pirates. Thanks for watching, please subscribe and support our channel.